All right, good morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Jennifer Ashton. I'm the special magistrate for the city of West Palm Beach this morning. I'm going to start by explaining how this process is going to go. If you have appeared at today's hearing, your case is going to be called before the individuals that have not shown up. Um, the cases will be called in the order that they appear, appear on the agenda. Do we have any construction services matters first? Okay, that, there's one exception to that rule. Construction services are going to be going first, and uh, then we'll call the cases as they appear on the agenda. Once your case is called, I'll ask that you come down to the front here. You're going to go to the podium, which is going to be on your left-hand side. The city is going to give me its evidence and testimony first. You'll have an opportunity to ask the city's witnesses any questions that you have, and then you'll have a chance to tell me what's going on with your property. Once I've heard everything, I will make a ruling, and you will either get a written order today or you'll get one in the mail based on the outcome of the case. Now again, if you have any questions as we go through the process, please feel free to ask them. One last thing, all testimony this morning does have to be under oath, so if you're here to speak on a case, I'd ask that you stand for me at this time and raise your right hand and I'll swear everybody in. Okay. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? <clears throat> all right, thank you. City, you can call your first case. First case, number 1824 35th Street, CE 1804 -0137. Good morning, my name is Tim Large. I'm the Chief Plumbing Inspector for the City of West Palm Beach. Uh, this uh, address was initially cited on uh, April of last year for a, uh, an existing cast iron sanitary drain line underneath the structure in the crawl space area, uh, which is in disrepair, and it's held together with duct tape and hose clamps, which is allowing wastewater to be discharged underneath the crawl space every time the plumbing fixtures are used. Um, I feel that the, the city's given the uh, owner adequate time seeing it's a year and nothing has been done to this point, um, asking that they have come into compliance within seven days or, or face a $50 a day fine. Is the building occupied at this time? At this point, I believe it is. The owner's son uh, supposedly is occupying the building. When I, we had service by posting on the 14th of March when I was up there. The structure did not appear to be occupied, but uh, one of my field inspectors has been following up on this, and he said that the son is living in there. Okay, and you've had actual contact with the owner over the course of the year, or um, is it just through? I've been dealing with the owner's son. We've given him several extensions on this to try to get this thing straightened out, and um, okay. I haven't heard from him since, I believe it was November of last year. Okay. All right, is anyone here for 824 35th Street? All right, seeing no one, I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There's a posting in the file, and there has been actual contact with a representative for the owner. The property is in violation of sections 116.1 and 101.3 of the Florida Building Code. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within seven days from today's date, or a $50 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Thank you. Number 8800 North Sapodilla Avenue, CE1902-0286. Construction services. Okay. 800 North Sapodilla. There's no one signed in, but it's a construction services case. We'll skip that one for now. Number... Oh, I think, is he coming? Are you coming down? Okay. Was it... It was number eight, right? Number eight, 800 North Sapodilla Ave, CE 1902-0286. Morning. Is there anybody here from? No, but go ahead. We always do these first. Um, this case, apparently the history, they have had, they had permits years ago to do renovation. The permits have expired. So I wrote a violation that there was no inspections on the property and the permits were expired. I've been in contact with the new current owner who didn't know, who claimed that he didn't know anything about it, and he was going to get with his um, title company and find out how this occurred, mm -hmm. and that's the last I've heard of it. But the permits were initially pulled several years ago. They've expired, so what has to happen is he has to come in, er, and apply for new permits and then get the inspections on the new windows that have been installed, and the interior remodel. And he, he's aware of it through our phone conversations, and apparently 
um, there's been no action to move forward with it. Okay. So uh, what is your recommendation? Well, I've given him an extension already. So um, I don't know. What's your recommendation? You want to? Typically, construction services, like a general recommendation, is 30 okay. days or a certain fine amount. So um, I would recommend 30 more days and then fines start. And the typical fine is either 50 or $100 a day $100 for construction a day. services. All right. All right. Anything further? No. Okay. Is anyone here for 800 North Sapodilla Avenue? All right. Seeing no one, I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find that notice is good and sufficient. There's a posting in the file, and there has been actual contact with the owner of the property. The property is in violation of sections 105.1 and 110.3 of the Florida Building Code. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date, or a $100 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, just one more out of order. Number 5, 718 44th Street, CE 19020357. Morning. Good morning. Joseph Oliva, chronic nuisance officer for the city of West Palm Beach. Uh, this property was declared a chronic nuisance on 2 2019 The declaration was posted on 2 2019 and certified mail sent on 2 2019 there has been no contact with the owner nor an action plan to this date. The notice of violation was posted 3-8-2019 and certified mail sent on 3-8-2019. The property has been owned since December of 2002. Its previous adjudications are um, CE 18110250-123-2019 for high grass, trash and debris, fence and disrepair, overgrowth, weeds, onto public right-of-way and uh, swale maintenance. When the property was declared a chronic nuisance, there was excessive overgrowth, trash and debris, trees and bushes need trimming, obstruction of the right-of-way, dead vegetation, fence and disrepair. The uh, city requests that the special magistrate find a pattern of nuisance activity and enter a chronic nuisance service order for services to be provided by the city to include, but not limited to, the maintaining of the landscape, removal of trash and debris, and access to the yard and any other abatement methods necessary to keep the property in compliance. Okay. Is anyone here for 718 44th Street? All right, seeing no one, I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There are postings in the file. I find that there's a pattern of nuisance activity that exists on the property. I affirm the city's declaration of chronic nuisance and notice of violation, and I hereby enter a chronic nuisance services order, allowing the city to enter the property and perform abatement services as are needed, which shall include but not be limited to uh, maintaining the vegetation on the property, including the grass, removing trash and debris, fixing the fence and disrepair, and any other abatement services determined by the city to be necessary. The city will be entitled to all abatement costs and reinspection fees for these efforts. All right, thank you. Thank you. Number two on the agenda, 714 25th Street, CE 19020217. Number two, 714 25th Street. Good morning, John Frosco, West Palm Beach Code. This property was declared a chronic nuisance on February 19th of. of 2019 property was posted and certified mail was sent out I did get a response from their council in New York uh, Mr. Holabear and I did not receive an action plan certified mail was sent out and the property was posted for the notice violation notice of hearing as of to this date I have not received a sufficient action plan that would curtail any of the nuisance activity and the nuisance activity is Pretty good, Magistrate. If you look at the pictures, okay. No. I'm I'm looking. There's a lot of um, debris and construction materials and overgrowth. So, what what were the prior adjudications on this one? It was for land use. Um, it was for um, trash and debris, unsanitary conditions, repair the fence and um the, the cease and dis cease and dis uh, yeah we have that was a cease and desist for the unlawful land use 
So that's what it was originally cited for, and it's still not complied as of today, and if you can see the pictures. But if you look at the property magistrate, the, the, the detriment that it causes to the community is pretty um, severe. <coughs> is it, it like being used as a storage yard? I mean, I'm trying to figure out what all this, what is all this? Is it an active business? It is an active business. Okay. Um, uh, half of it was rented out from the communication that I had to a tenant that had the rear of the property. The Lane Hart and Potter, this was the old Lane Hart and Potter sold to a new company. The Florida Department of Transportation um, took part of their property in the back, paid them a, a, a sum for that, to, um, and then they moved what they had in the back over to this lot, which they own, and they did so without the city's permission. So that's what started that um, with the land use requirement. Um, it requires, like it requires a whole site plan review and um, all the permits that come along with it. Okay. How, however, there are certain things that are a priority on that property, the hazardous waste, the junk vehicles, the site visibility, the obstruction of the sidewalk, the overgrowth, all of that filth and unsanitary conditions, and those could be remedied quickly. They, they, they're not something that takes a lot of time to do. And in, even in reviewing an action plan after the fact, it, two months to do uh, compliance that we normally would give someone in 10 days to do it, and that was from the original violation that they had, which started the chronic nuisance case. Let me make sure I'm understanding, because it looks like there's a long history with this. Um, the land use, what, I just want to break this down for a second. The, the land use issue, it's because they, they haven't gotten approval for the, the type of use on the property. They would have to get the city's approval as to the land use. You would require it to be site planned for what, like a lay down yard or a storage facility or, or something along right. whatever those lines. they Whatever they decide to use it for. It needs the proper approvals from the city to do that. It can't just be a throw whatever we want here it, idea. Right. Okay, um, and then for, in addition to the land use issue, there have been prior adjudications on um, no, like that was the trash and debris and the junk. No, that was inclusive of, uh, the, of that, the okay. case that it's based on. And what year was that case in? It's, that case started actually um, in October, October 31st of 2018. Okay. And they were given um, ample enough time to comply up until the, the, the hearing date. Um, the hearing date for that case was December 7th of 2018. So they had two months, they had an adjudication, and then still non-compliance. Okay. And have you had any contact with anyone from the property owner? I've had hot, recent contact with the company that they chose to um, Help you. do the site plan okay and the attorney's interaction but after that no the first that was it okay all right great good morning good morning john schmidt agent for the uh for the uh, address at um uh 714 25th street which is um uh a, a J -E -S -A -J, west palm beach inc and it's operated by marjam which is a construction company if i could uh, approach i wanted sure. to uh, give you uh some, uh, uh, if the city, if you could have the city attorney take a look at those first, just explain to her what those are. Thank you. So, uh, there's a front on, the large one is a front on to The large, the large evidence is a chronological order of uh, the violations and what's been going on in the property, and then this uh, small one is uh, a cliff notes or a cheat sheet of the progress that we've been going through. So. Um, it, it just had some pictures and some uh, uh, other stuff that was going on instead of going through the full one. Sure. All right. Um, I'll enter that for the record. <clears throat> Again, good morning, uh, John Schmidt, uh, agent for the. Uh, well, let me um, let me get this stuff real quick, Mr. Okay. Schmidt, and then City. Do you have any objection to any of those documents? No, no. Okay. No objection. I'm sorry. Thank you. All right, so we'll go ahead and admit. Would you like, you want those admitted into the record? Yes, please. Okay. 
uh, and you'll be getting you'll be getting two packets. Uh, there's a large packet, which is the really the chronological order of uh, you know what's been going on with the property, and then the small packet is just uh, kind of a cliff notes version of the progress that we have done uh, to show you that we are making forward progress. And I've just highlighted some dates on there. Uh, again, Marjam uh, is uh, is the operator on a lumber yard. They uh, employ over 34 people on site and have over a million sales uh, on the property, so they are a large employer in the area. Uh, we did. We did uh, have a relocation of the use uh, of the property uh, because of the, the DOT taking, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know our focus has really been trying to get the uh, tenant that we had uh, and, uh, causing a lot of the problems. And we knew we had a problem with him back in August, uh, which was prior to the code violations. Uh, he was really using the property as a, as a junkyard, for lack of a better term. Uh, so, uh, you know, we noticed him in August, uh, you know, we went to the hearings, you actually saw, uh, heard our case in December, uh, gave us 60, 60 days from real on that point, and we've been working diligently. Uh, the property had over 166 vehicles parked on it uh, from the person who had leased the property. Uh, we've been working diligently at getting, off, getting those off there, and uh, we're down to uh, less than 16 vehicles as of yesterday. So th there's been a, over 150 removed from the property. <laughs> Um, and uh, we've been working with that lease or trying to get those moved off there. We've uh, went to several vendors to get the rest of them off there and uh, uh, Sisters Towing being one of them and none of the none of the vendors will uh, touch them without having a title on the property. So they won't take them. That's another, you know, uh, legally. So we're, we're seeking other means, but we're going to need obviously additional time. Um, the uh, the uh, vehicles have been removed. Uh, all the vegetation within the property has been mowed and, and taken down. I will admit the uh, the perimeter still looks shabby, but getting to both sides of it with all the vehicles parked around the perimeter has been difficult. So we feel we need another 30 days uh, uh, to get that taken care of. Uh, once that's uh, completed, then we'll be able to mend the fence and bring that portion into compliance. Uh, the northern portion where the lumber yard is was a relocation uh, due to the DOT taking. Uh, we've submitted our uh, BTR application, which you'll see in here, uh, you know, as, as trying to bring this all into compliance. Um, and we're going to have to go through a site plan approval. And, you know, the 60 days um, that were given in the initial order are going to be, you know, uh, a lot less than what's going to be necessary for us to bring that into going through site plan approval process. Uh, you know, getting permits for all the items, and we've identified a uh, action plan. Uh, we we didn't do it within the 15 days of the notice of the chronic violation, but we have submitted that to staff. Uh, they didn't feel that that was um, uh, done in appropriate time frames and rejected it. We're here today to ask for additional time. Um, you can see the efforts in there, and to not deemed uh, to be chronic and uh, you know, continue to move the project forward and uh, get it into compliance. We're happy to come back here in another 30 days to show you, you know, the vegetation cleanup and the, uh, you know, the additional remaining vehicles, but we're really having a tough time getting those towed off the property. Okay. Um, Let me, before I forget, um, the two exhibits that were given to me, do you mind if I just make them a composite exhibit? Please. Can I just do it as one? Okay, and I have, a, Looks like a summary sheet dated April 2nd, 2019 with some backup information in it and a March 27th, 2019, more comprehensive review of the property history. Uh, the city had no objection to these documents, so I'm admitting both into the record as composite exhibit one from the respondent. Okay, yes, Mr. When Prosser. the notice was sent out, the, the declaration of chronic nuisance on February 19th, they had 15 days to submit an action plan from that point they did not i spoke to their attorney on the 22nd of i uh, know it was excuse me let me, let me look at this. On, on the 21st and i still not received an action plan the notice of violation notice of hearing that's sent to you is to say that you did not submit it not at that point submit an action plan and I did not receive an action plan, and if I did, I certainly would have worked with them to try and come to some sort of arrangement that would work. Magistrate, keep in mind that the, the, there was an order to get that place clean and sanitary, and it still exists. It's not that it was complied, and now they're asking again to give additional time to get it clean when they, they've already ruled on that. So I need an action plan that would have been sufficient. For example, vegetation re removal, 
they want to do that in, by June 1st. They should already have started on that the minute the magistrate made the order. It would contradict that order from to begin with, and all we're asking for is the service order and a declaration that it is a chronic nuisance and not to, to waver from that. And if they do what they're supposed to do, then all it is is a fee that's charged as far inspections to make sure that they do what they're supposed to do. Okay, we'll, we'll um, talk about what your code says about the service order and what that means in just a minute. Um, question for the city, if I entered a, a service order today, what's your intention with abatements? Are you all intending to go in immediately or would you, if they did submit an action, say I enter the, the order, finding a pattern of nuisance activity and, and give the city what they're asking for today, but then they do give you this service or this action plan, would you still be willing to work with them on the action plan so that the city doesn't have to expend resources going in abate immediately and work with them to get this cleaned up before you take action? Or were you thinking you're gonna go in right away and take action? This is how I look at it because this is a little bit different than most, most cases. I would not ordinarily, even though the service order would allow me, I'm looking at the, the picture. If I'm inspecting to make sure that they're doing the work, I'm not gonna send the city contractor in to cut clean and do what they need to do in order to abate these issues, but I have to make sure that they're getting them done. So they would only incur a charge. Now, if they drop the ball and completely abandon the property and stop doing it, then I would actually utilize the service order to get that done. So I have to use a little bit of judgment um, when it comes to having the contractor go in and clean it. And we would be talking about a pretty good expense to do that to the right, city and out of our I'm, budget. That's why I'm asking this, because you, you have a- I'm you, sorry, I'm sure. sorry, Major, I'm sorry to stop. You see that lean to right there? Mm -hmm. That's a health life safety risk. It doesn't take, could you go back please? I, I saw it, it's a, I saw it. So what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to get to this morning is you you've said there's some true health safety issues here like this you know if, if this were to fall on the sidewalk it could seriously injure somebody exactly but um i know the city doesn't normally get action plans after a service order is entered but there's a willing party here willing to do an action plan with you i'm not saying i i'm not going to enter the service order today but um you would be willing to work with them with an action plan to get those health safety things addressed immediately. And then if, and then if they didn't follow that plan you all agreed to, you then would go do it. For the non-emergency stuff, same idea. They would come with an action plan to you. You would look at it, make recommendations and requests, and you guys would come to some agreement on the other stuff. And then if they didn't follow that, then you'd go use your abatement authority through the service order. Yes, Magistrate, and okay. for the record, we always work with people that are willing to do it, but they have to show us a reasonable application to comply with the code violations. So and I, we, and would, I, I understand. we would do that. The only difference is that we, it's hard to, to put it into a context. We sort of would set aside your order, but not set us, it would still be there. If you needed would, it. Yes, but we Correct. would change the status of the case to say this is an action plan um, uh, that we've accepted, but then they violated that. It, does, it won't negate the fact that your service order is still there. That's, and that's what I'm trying to get at, because it is rare to have someone show up at this stage. Usually we come to these kind of mm -hmm. hearings and no one's here on the other side. So I do appreciate that you're here today and, and you're, you're, you're willing to go ahead and go forward with an action plan with the city and negotiate all this stuff. Um, do you want to respond to anything real quick? And then I'm going to kind of explain where I'm at and what my authority is. Okay, go ahead. If I could, uh, I'm James Metcalf. I'm the business manager. I was here on December 7th before you, and I represented then that it would be 60 days that we would have it cleaned up. And I'm here again to let you know that the issues that we had in removing the tenant have been way beyond anything we would ever expected. The amount of money that we spent in attorney fees and so on to try to remove the tenant has been amazing, much less than it would cost to excavate and clean up the property and make a new building. Um, so it's not for lack of effort. 
and that's why we've hired John to assist us with the action plan. And I'll turn it over to John, but I just want to let you know, we're not ignoring it. It has been a frustration and a very, very costly thing for our company. Okay. So under the city's code, the way I've always viewed my responsibility when they bring a chronic nuisance service case to me is if we get to this hearing and there hasn't been an agreed upon action plan by the time we get here, mm -hmm. I, I always feel an obligation to enter a service order because I don't, I don't have a lot of latitude under the city's code to ignore the fact that an action plan hasn't come in before this hearing and been agreed to before this hearing. So what a service order means is it is in effect for a year, assuming your property is clean for a year. If at any point in time during a, a year time frame, you fall out of compliance, it restarts the year. If you are clean for a year, it automatically goes away. If you're clean for a year, there's no charges to you from the city because there's nothing that the city's had to do to come clean your property for you. If you're not clean during the year, the city has the option to go in and clean it for you. And then of course, in that, in that circumstance, you would be facing costs that the city had to incur in, in bringing your property back into compliance. From what I'm seeing here in the photos and based on the case history, I feel obligated today to impose a service order. But I wanted to make sure that you know you have an opportunity not to incur any expenses from this order, and there are steps you can take to make sure you're not incurring expenses. You've hired a very good consultant to help you through this. I would really suggest that you all sit down with Officer Frosca and you come up with this action plan that I just talked about. You've got the emergency issues that need to be addressed immediately, and then you have some of the, the non-emergency issues that do need to be resolved, but you guys can come up with a time frame to resolve those. If you get an agreed upon action plan and you stick to that action plan, the city's not gonna do anything. And so a year from now, you'll have no charges from the city except some reinspection fees along the way to make sure you're, you're staying compliant with the action plan. But you won't have any of those abatement costs, those things that are really gonna be expensive for you. Um, are you all agreeable to meeting with Officer Frosca and getting this action plan going forward and approved? If, if I may, uh, uh, the action so the action plan uh, was required within 15 days. Uh, or, or admitting that an action plan was not done within 15 days. Tried to rush an action plan, got it over to him yesterday, and it's not satisfactory. If we could roll back a couple of the of the. Um, if we could roll back maybe a couple of the pictures, there's a, there's a mattress along the right of way. Um, there's considerable dumping, you know, throughout the, throughout the area. Mm -hmm. And what I would, what I would prefer if it's possible, I don't know if you have these, uh, these every 15 days or every 30 days, I would rather, I would rather come back and get an agreed action plan with the code enforcement officer that you that you agree to because we're getting you know we're getting uh, you know an action plan together not that we don't agree with him but some of these some of these dates aren't really reasonable that he's asking for from us I can't move some of these vehicles without having the title I don't know how long that's going to take I've asked for six months to clean up these final dozen vehicles on here it doesn't feel that that's reasonable and and there's illegal dumping on the street that I don't really want to be charged for and, you know, because they laid half of it, there's the perfect example, you know, they're laying it up on the curb and the code enforcement officer coming out and saying, hey, you got to clean this up. Well, you do, though. Uh, it, you do. Uh, they're, leave, they're leaving it out on, they're leaving it <laughs> but, in the right away, and, I, you know, I don't know what to do about but that. But it's technically on your property because it's the sidewalk area and it's leaning against your fence. So just. So I, so, so I would ask that we come back with, a, what I would ask is that we come back in 15 days or 30 days with a plan that we've worked out together that you approve. But I, you know, I understand where you're going. There are limitations with what I can do today, and unfortunately, that action plan was not submitted within the time in the ordinance, and that's where, that's where I I can't overrule what the okay. code tells me to do. So, but I I strongly encourage you to keep working with Officer Frosca, come up with that action plan so that you are not incurring 
abatement charges. That's where it gets very expensive because if the city's coming in and they're hauling cars off and they're storing cars on your behalf, there are going to be some significant expenses okay. associated with that. Yeah. So, um, all right. Yeah. Yes. Can I just say one thing. Um, this is an active business, and most active businesses have somebody who patrols their parking lot, cleans, for example, public sends out their, their people first thing in the morning to clean up their parking lot and their surrounding areas. That's an obligation for them to do that, to keep their property clean and sanitary, to say someone does this or someone does that. It's how you keep that property overall makes a statement to people that they don't care and they will legally dump and it will be continual when you have a nice clean property you might see litter here and there but it's less likely that somebody is going to dump and that's part of a core of an action plan is to say i recognize these things these are the things i'm going to put in writing and these are the things i'm going to do to curtail this nuisance activity okay all right thank you all right, uh, hearing everything, I'm gonna make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm gonna find notices good and sufficient. There's postings in the file and there's been actual contact with representatives for the owner of the property. I am gonna find that there's a pattern of nuisance activity that exists on the property. I'm gonna affirm the city's declaration of chronic nuisance and notice of violation. And I am gonna enter a chronic nuisance services order as of today, um, which will allow the city to enter the property as needed and abate the health safety welfare violations and any other nuisance activity that is occurring on the property and any uh, reinspection fees and abatement costs will be um, paid by the owner pursuant to the city code um, again as i said get an action plan with the city address things in a timely fashion handle those emergency items immediately with officer frosca so that you guys are not incurring abatement costs and then if you are clean for an entire year this thing goes away automatically um, that is my ruling today again stay in touch with the code officer and um, hopefully you guys can come up with some arrangements so that you're not incurring costs but get those emergency things done quick because the fact I'm hearing there's emergency items today the city will go abate those quickly they won't wait for you guys to get them done understand thank okay you. Thank all right you thank you thank you Eric Okay, well, they'll mail the order. Um, Mr. Schmidt, did you, if you want a copy of it, if you could give your contact information sure. to the code officer and they'll make sure okay. you get a copy. All right, thank you. Thanks. Um, number seven, seven, three, I'm sorry, number 7432 LA Kirksey Street, CE 18120064. I believe there's a stipulation. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, this is a stipulation for me. All right. Okay. All right, I have a, um, let's see. I have a stipulation in front of me that is giving the respondent 90 days or until July 4th, 2019 to bring the property into compliance. Could you just tell me who you are real quick? Michael Perry, the owner. Okay. And Tiffany Perry, counsel for Mr. Perry. Okay, great. And uh, Mr. Perry, it looks like you have signed this as the owner of the property. Do you agree to these terms? Yes, I do. Okay, great. And if um, it says in here... If uh, it's not complied by July 4th, there will be a fine of $90 a day, okay, until it is brought into compliance. Do you have any questions before I sign this? No, you're not. Okay, great. All right, I will sign this, and you all are free to go. Actually, wait, let me get you, I think you get a copy of this. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Did I get the yellow copy? Yeah, I have to have the city attorney sign it. Oh, just one minute. Yeah, we'll take a minute. You can go ahead and get it signed so they can go. Thank you.
Next case number 13. <clears throat> 500 Biscayne Drive, CE1901522. Good morning, Richard Pasmino, Code Enforcement Officer for the City of West Palm Beach. This property was originally cited by former code officer Mark Sargent. This property was cited January 31st, 2019. Certified mail was sent February 1st, 2019. And the property was posted January 8th, 2019. This property was cited for non-residential repairing of the walls and structure, non-residential paint for the structure, clean and sanitary conditions, excessive growth and landscape maintenance. Um, at the reinspection yesterday, there were contractors on the property. They were in the process of fixing violations 18106A, 18106B, 18106K, and I've met with the representative of the property today. Um, for the remaining violations, 18105A, 18105J, uh, the representative was asking for 90 days to come into compliance. I have no opposition to that. If the property does not come into compliance, then the city is asking for $200 a day fine. Okay, so all the landscaping and clean and sanitary, that stuff has come into compliance. It's just the paint and the repairing of the structure. Yes. Okay, great. Hi, good morning. Hi, Alberto Urechiga. Um, I represent the owner. Um, yeah, we've we've taken care of the cleaning the property. We had to remove all the debris and everything before we can paint. It just needs to be pressure washed and painted so it matches and look better. But 90 days is sufficient time for us to do it. Okay, great. So. All right, hearing nothing further, I'm gonna make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm gonna find notice is good and sufficient. There's a posting in the file and there's been actual contact with a representative for the owner. The property has come into compliance with sections 18106A, 18106B, and 18106K. The property remains in violation of sections 18105A and 18105J. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 90 days from today's date or a $200 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved, okay? Thank you very much and Thank there's you. an order for you. This case number 39, 979-39th Street, CE1902-0055. Number 39, 979-39th Street. Good morning. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. 979 39th Street was cited on 2619. The property in City Hall were posted on 2719. Certified mail was sent on 2819. The property was posted for window screens, um, roof slash foundation repair, window slash door repair, exterior paint, clean and sanitary, inoper inoperative vehicle, trash can placement, and unpaved parking. Um, the property has since come into compliance with all sections with the exception of 18, I'm sorry, with the exception of 18-103-E. I've had contact with the owner. The city is asking for an additional 60 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. So they've done a lot. Yes. Okay, so only the external doors and windows. That's Correct. And um, I'm at, we're asking for 60 days because that does require a permit. Um, the owner has since applied for the permit, so it's just going through um, the process now. Okay, and if uh, it's not complied by within 60 days, what is the fine <coughs> recommendation? $100, $100 per day. Okay. How quick does this... They've already applied for the permit, yes. right? So that's a good thing. So they're just waiting for the approval now because it has to go through the historic district, a okay. historic board for approval. 60 days enough time for that? Um, it, because they've already applied for it, it's already in the system, so it's already going through that process. So it's, um, it's just a door um, replacement, so it's not like extensive work. Oh, yeah, but you said it has to go through the historical board to yes. approve the architectural change? Correct. Mm. Okay. I may give a little more time. Just if it has to go to a public hearing, that's a little okay. challenging to get that scheduled. But good morning. 
Good morning. My name is Michael. I'm the owner of the property. As you see, a lot of the jobs have been done. I'm waiting for the historical to get the permit. Did they give you any indication on when you would maybe be going to that hearing to get approval? Your or? guess is as good as mine. Okay. Okay. Would well, the city have any objection to 90 days on this no, just to give a little more no time? No, Okay, days. great. You all have done a lot of work, so I'll give you a little more time to get through that process. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notices good and sufficient. There's posting in the file. The property has come into compliance with sections 18102-3, 18103B, 18103J, 18106A, 34-102B, 74-34A1J, and 94-482A. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 90 days from today's date, or a $100 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Okay. Yes, sir. yes. What about if 90 days I don't get the permit? So what you will do is you will talk to your code officer the entire 90 days. Make sure that you're keeping in contact with her and then she can tell you your options at that point in time, okay? But ho hopefully, since you already have the permit in for review, that's, that's one of the big first steps. A lot of times people come to me and they haven't even done that yet. Um, the fact that it's already in review, you're... you're light years ahead of where the some people The reason that are. I'm asking because I have another property that's already, already been six months waiting for the permit from the historical and I don't have the papers yet. Okay. Depends on the type of work. Sometimes certain permits m move much faster in the process than, so if it's like a full remodel, it takes longer than a door or window permit. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. There's thank an order you. for you. Thank you. Case number 41, 5400 North Flagler Drive, CE 1902023. Number 41, 5400 North Flagler. Anyone here from 5400 North Flagler Drive? The owner is 5400 Flagler LLC. Neighbors, we'll go ahead and call it if they're here. Yeah. Okay. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. 5400 North Flagler resided on 21919. The property and city hall were posted on 22519. Certified mail was sent on 22019. The property was cited for exterior paint, um, window screening, and clean and sanitary. The property has since come into compliance with 18-102-3 and 18-106-A. Um, the property is still... Um, not in compliance with 18-106-G. I've had no um, contact with the owner. The city is asking for an additional 30 days or $150 per day until compliance is achieved. Does the city require um, permits before they would paint a large structure like this or they can start they can work pay. immediately if they, they start actually? start work immediately. Okay, great, thank you. And we had some <coughs> neighbors that wanted to talk about the property? Yes. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Angela Ogburn, Northwood Harbor Association board member. Um, yes, we. this property has been like this since before the beginning of the year. So a lot of the neighbors that live in this uh, building don't want to speak out because a lot of them are Section 8. They don't want retribution. So we would like to see a speedy cleanup on this property, please. Okay. And are you, you own units in this building or you're a neighbor property? A neighboring property. Got it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So my role today is to set a time frame, obviously, for them to come into compliance, and then a fine will start, which will hopefully give some kind of financial motivation for them to complete the work. So I think 30 days is reasonable just to get the building painted since they've had time prior to this hearing to do it and they haven't done it. So, Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There's a posting in the file. The property has come into compliance with sections 18-102-3 and 18-106-A. The property remains in violation of section 18-106-G. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date or a $150 per day fine will be imposed and it will run until compliance is achieved. All right, thank you all thank for coming you. out. We appreciate it. Case number 405510 Greenwood Ave, CE 1902013. Number 405510 Greenwood. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
5510 Greenwood has agreed to the stipulation. <coughs> okay, so. great, great. Thank you. And if you could just tell me who you all are, please. My name is Richard Glenn. I'm an attorney, and this is Mark Tankoffer. Okay, and you're the owner. All right, great. Let me read this real quick. Okay, and so I'm reading the stipulation, and it says, Mr. Hinkoffer, you are agreeing to a period of 90 days or until July 2nd, 2019, to bring the property into compliance. If uh, you don't come into compliance within that time frame, there will be a $200 per day fine that will run until you do come into compliance. Are you in agreement with those terms? Yes. If, okay. I, if I have problems, she said call her and, and keep in touch with her if something's running like a permit or something. Yes, absolutely. Like I just told the other gentleman, stay in contact with your code officer throughout the entire 90-day period. Um, give her updates, and then if, if you do run into uh, an issue, she can advise you of options at that point, okay? okay thank you. All right, great. So I will go ahead and sign this with today's date, and then we'll get the city attorney to sign this as well. We have a few other cases. Are those also stipulations? Yes. Yeah, we, yeah, we worked it out. Oh, are so, these all, are they all on here? Um, I have them here. Oh, okay. You want to call the other yeah, ones then? then so we'll just do them all at once. <clears throat> yeah. Um, oh, hold on. Which, do you know which ones they are on the agenda? I get, yeah. yeah. Number 49, 5600 Greenwood, Greenwood CE 19030054. Okay, hold on. Let's do these in order. I'll, I need, which one was that? 49, 49 5600 Greenwood. Thank you. Okay. All right, so for 5600 Greenwood Ave, Mr. Hinkoffer, I have here the same time frame, 90 days or until July 2nd, 2019 to come into compliance or a $200 per day fine will run until you do come into compliance. You're in agreement with this as well? Thank you. Okay, I'll go ahead and sign that one. Okay, next one. For 51, 5700 Greenwood, CE 19030056, 5700 Greenwood, number 51. Thank you. Okay. Looks like the same thing on this one, 90 days from today or until July 2nd to come into compliance or a $200 per day fine will run. That's right. Okay. All right, stipulation is approved. Okay. Number 52-5724 Greenwood Ave, CE 19030057. Thank you. All right, and we've got the same thing for this one as well, 90 days from today or until July 2nd to come into compliance or a $200 per day fine will run until compliance is achieved. All right, I will approve this stipulation. I believe that's it for the, that case. Did we get all of them? We have 5520. Oh, there's another oh, one? Do you know what one that was on the agenda? Number 46, 5520 Green Road, CE 19020358. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Hinkoffer, it looks like the exact same thing. 90 days from today or until July 2nd to come into compliance or a $200 per day fine will run until compliance is achieved. All right, thank you. I'll sign this one as well. Okay, and that was it. So we had five stipulations, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and we can have the city attorney sign these so they can. And I'll have to call the other case and I'll give, hand them over. That's okay. okay. Yeah, Thank that's you. fine. Number 19. Uh, she is going to get the city attorney to sign these so you can take your copies with you. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and call the next case. Thank you. Number 19, 610 51st Street, CE 19020383. Number 19, 610 51st Street. Someone here? Good morning. Go oh, ahead. good morning. Hi. These are I, actually tenants. So just go ahead and grab a seat over there. Don't we? I, I don't think, were they here earlier when I swore people in? I they don't think so. They weren't magistrate. No, they okay. weren't. Okay. Were they wanting to speak this morning? They, they are, yes, Okay. Can I get you to raise your right hand and I'll swear you in? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? All right. Thank you very much. And is the I, owner here today or no? No, I haven't seen the owner. Okay. I haven't seen the owner. Go ahead. Okay. All right. 
Joe Patrick, West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This case in reference to a single family residence that was issued a notice of violation via certified mail and posting on February 27th after receiving complaints from the tenants who are present here today to testify for broken asphalt and concrete, roof and walls in disrepair, windows and doors in disrepair, interior and exterior lights in disrepair, plumbing, cabinets and interior walls, damage and in disrepair, exterior need of repair, Pair and paint, trash and debris on the property, no rental license on file, unregistered and operable vehicles parked on the grass, and uh, no address characters on the house. The notice of violation gave 30 days to comply for the following ordinance violations to repair the concrete and asphalt, to repair or replace the roof and walls, to repair or replace the windows and doors, and to replace Re or repair the electrical plumbing and cabinets. It also gave 30 days to paint and repair the exterior of the structure and to obtain a rental license. And then it gave them 10 days for clean and sanitary to remove the trash and debris from the property, to also remove the unregistered vehicles or reg properly register them and make them operable, mm -hmm. and to put proper address characters on the, on the house. As you can see, it's just written in a, with a Sharpie on the front. Sure. Um, let's see, then three days to remove that vehicle right there from the grass. As of today, the property remains in violation of all the pre previous code violations. I've never heard from the respondent on this case. The city is asking for five days for the clean and sanitary to remove the trash and debris from the property. We're asking for an abatement order. And then 30 days for the other violations or a $250 day fine be assessed. Or 250? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the clean and sanitary, you're asking for the abatement. Did you want the numbering characters for the abatement? Or were you just going to let that be the 30 day? Uh, that could be a safety violation if the, uh, if the police or fire department had to respond. So it asked for an abatement order on that as well. Yes. I'm just looking at the list here. Okay, make sure I get this right. Okay, and we have the tenants. Would you like to tell me what's going on with the property? You can come up to the podium and... And were they previously, were they previously sworn? Just tell me your, I did swear them in, yeah, just a minute ago, thank you. Could you tell me your names, please? My name is Lauren George. Here, pull it towards you, I can't hear you. Lauren George. Okay, and you live at the property? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you are, ma'am? Rhonda George. Okay, and you live there as well? Yes. All right, what would you like to tell me? That for four years, this has been like this. Okay. Four years, constantly, we've been complaining to the landlord, the property manager, and we've been told it's going to be addressed, it's going to be fixed, and as you can see, nothing's happening, and they're still collecting rent and still getting money and still aren't doing anything okay so what I, my role is today is I set up a time frame for the property owner to come into compliance if they don't come into compliance within the time I tell them to there's a fine running daily until they do bring it into compliance so it's it's financial motivation for the landlord to get stuff done uh, hopefully they care that there could be a $250 per day fine running on their property if they don't bring it up to par um, we'll just have to see. Uh, the city has some rights after the fact if, if the property owner doesn't comply, um, and they'll probably be exploring those at a certain point. But anyway, hopefully today we'll get some financial motivation to get them moving and, and get the property up to city standards, okay? But I thank you for coming out. I, I do appreciate it. It's, thank you. All right. So I'll make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law if I notice is good and sufficient. There's a posting on the file. 
Uh, the property is in violation of sections 18-100, 18103B, 18103E, 18103I, 18103J, 18106A, 18-162A, 34-102A, 78-6, and 94-482A. Four sections, 18106A and 78-6. Um, I do find that there's a health, safety, and welfare issue associated with those violations, and the city is authorized to enter the property and abate those violations. I'm sorry, they're giving the respondent five days to come into compliance or the city is authorized to enter the property and abate those two violations. And the city will be entitled to any abatement costs and reinspection fees. For the other violations, I'm ordering that the respondent come into compliance within 30 days from today's date or a $250 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. So just one thing for you as tenants, the trash and debris and and all the personal items that are being stored outside, if those aren't cleaned up within five days, it's the landlord's responsibility to clean them. Um, but if that's not done within five days, the city may come in and clean that stuff and throw it away. So if you have any personal items outside that you don't want thrown out, you, you may wanna go through that and make sure those things are secured in the house before the end of the five day period, okay? Because the city may be coming in and I don't want your personal stuff getting thrown out, okay? All right, thanks a lot. Thank Bye. You. Oh, they're at 11? Are they now? Oh, are they here? Yes. Oh, okay. Next case, number one on the other matters agenda, number 423 49th Street, CE 0701-0386. They're also on number four. 423 49th Street, CE 1407 We're doing the reductions now? I thought, I just asked you. I thought you said it's not. That's all that we have present here, if you want to hear them. Who are, the, who are these two individuals here? Is anyone here for the regular agenda? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll do that. So, sir, what address are you? 561 Greenwood Avenue. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you talking to me? Yes. Item number, thank you. That's item number 50. He's 50. here for police case. And PD's not even here yet. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Gotcha. Yes, sir, come on down. Thank you. And your number 50 on the agenda is what I believe I heard. Confusion. <laughs> number 50 on the agenda, 5620 Greenwood Ave, CE 19030055. Good morning, Anna. Were you sworn in earlier, sir? No, ma'am. Okay. If you could raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, thank you. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Natalie Clark, City West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Um, he has agreed to the stipulation. Okay, great. I love stipulations. We've got a lot of these today. Okay, and could you tell me your name, sir? Uh, Emilio Perez. Okay, and it says here that you're the president of the property owner? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and it says here that you have agreed to 90 days from today's date or until July 2nd to bring the property into compliance. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you also understand that if you don't bring it into compliance by July 2nd, there will be a $200 per day fine that will run until you do bring it into compliance. Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. I am going to approve the stipulation. Okay, and we'll have the city attorney sign this and then you can be on your way. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Okay, do we have anyone else present for the first part of the agenda, regular items? Are you okay? Are you ready for? No, I don't know if all of them are here. Just, just, 
Number one, other matters, 423 49th Street, CE 0701038C6, 423 49th Street. Oh, so we are doing, we're doing these? Okay. We have, we're good? Okay, we've got someone? Good morning. Morning. Um, all right, if we're gonna do the fine reductions, let me go ahead and swear anybody in the room that hasn't been sworn in before. So if, all testimony this morning has to be under oath. So if you're here for one of the police cases or for uh, one of the fine reductions, if you could just raise your right hand for me and I'll swear you in. And if I haven't already. <laughs> all right, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, thank you very much. All right. We're doing both together, correct? Is there another one? Oh, you said number four is also here for the same. <coughs> You're here on two cases, right, sir? Oh. Is that right? There's two, two leads for the same property. <laughs> Got it. Um, do we want to hand, do number four as well? Number four, 423 49th Street, CE 1407-0597. Okay, thanks. Okay, go ahead. Case ending at 386 423 49th Street, date ordered 39 of 07, fine started 49 of 07, ran for 4,375 days, total now 875,000, $200 a day, date of compliance 41 of 19, new owner, case ending in 597, 423 49th Street, date ordered 827 of 14, fine started 929 of 14, ran for 1,645 days, total now 411,250. Uh, $250 a day, data compliance 41 of 19. Let me get you this and then I'll continue. Is that a new owner as well? Yes. Okay. Thank goodness. That's a lot of liens. <laughs> it was the same owner from 90 okay. through. Uh, okay. Okay, continue. It, it is a new owner. He, he's, he's putting significant effort on the property. Uh, however, we have another issue that came up about a week ago. Uh, Mr. Attenberg putting it politely, insisted on meeting to try and uh, discuss this whole lien reduction issue. Uh, essentially, he's working on a project with the CRA, and uh, Ms. Williams was present as well, and I've already spoken with the CRA. He's basically threatened that if he didn't get a significant lien reduction, he was pulling out of the project with the CRA. This was about as unprofessional a conversation as I've encountered doing lien reductions, short of irate screaming, which fortunately did not occur. Um, granted, the actual liens total of almost $1.3 million. The city's asking for 3% on each. Okay. Oh. The only mitigating factor involved is that he's a new owner. Uh, additionally, we had two members of the community here, but they couldn't stay this late. Okay. Uh, they wanted me to express their concern that the lien would just be, you know, wiped out to some minuscule amount after, well, over a decade of putting up with um, a very large problem in the community. Okay. But you said significant work has been done? Significant finish. work has been done. We have every confidence that the, the work will be finished. The, this property is the CRA property or no, there's that's, another? That's a separate, it's not a CRA property. It's a property that he's, it's his property that he's working on grant with grant. help from the CRA, okay. and I my understand. understanding is he will be given a CRA grant for the other property. Okay. But Thanks. like I said, he basically threatened to hold the, pro the, the project hostage if he didn't get a significant lien reduction. In our view, 3%, 97% is a significant lien reduction. Okay, I understand. Good morning. Hi, hi good morning, and uh, thank you for giving me the uh, opportunity to be on uh, your agenda today. Uh, uh, respectfully, I'm a, a big fan of code enforcement. I've been a compliant property owner in the city of West Palm for, for 20 years. Uh, with, if I look around the room, uh, Mr. Levine, Mr. Lopez, Mr. Frasca, who is outside, I all have great relationships. Mr. Frasca actually asked, he said, oh gee, I wish you got this property, it would be uh, cleaned up. I'm a, a state certified general contractor and uh, I pull permits in the city all the time and uh, compliant property owner. May, may I give you some pictures? Of the sure. Uh, I, I have some on my screen showing kind of the work I'll, that's I'll just, been done, but yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is the uh, uh, progression. It, this is, shows the before and after. Do, do 
Could you state your name for the record? Uh, Richard Atten. Thank you. This is uh, the past eight weeks. <clears throat> this is a property that I did uh, with a work with Mr. Lopez right around the corner that I uh, own. And um, had a great uh, experience there. Did you want those back, sir? Oh, sure. Thank you. You can put them in the record if you want, or if you want to keep them. Okay. Well, so, the city still agrees that significant work has been done improving the property. Okay. So I, I have uh, nine uh, active uh, permits on the property. We've uh, completed a roof, hurricane windows, uh, structural concrete work to the columns and the beams due to neglect. Um, I actually had to go to court to uh, get certificate of title uh, and spend $3,000 on legal fees because the prior owner uh, did a bogus uh, objection to sale. Uh, which I mean, he'd still be around. And <laughs> um, but uh, I have also paid $5,460 for uh, conduit liens and also had to pay uh, 12360 for a water meter and sewer separate to separate it from uh, the other buildings. Um, but uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Posner feels, uh, let me give some clarification on the CRA project. Uh, without release of lien for this, I can't get a construction loan to finish this project. Uh, and I just, uh, to be honest, I can't afford to, to continue and do the, the other project. I have to, I can't do both. I just can't afford it. I mean, it's, I, mean I, I understand you know, him, Mr. Posner, not liking the intertwining, I guess, of CRA. And I'm, I'm a big fan of both code enforcement and CRA. Uh, just, I just can't afford to do both. I need, uh, I was, I had a construction lien, uh, loan that was due to close escrow and uh, went through underwriting and I was approved and they were going to escrow $5,000 uh, for, you know, for, you know, completion and the release of lien. And uh, it went through to the very end, to the day before closing, I obtained builder's risk coverage, got, you know, all ready for, you know, with the title company. And they pulled the plug and said, hey, we're not comfortable given a lack of uh, quantifiable or timeline. With, so we need to wait to fund your construction loan until this is done, uh, until you have a release of lien. I, I, I'm sorry he feels that way, but that's just not the case. I can't afford, it's not, if I could afford to do both, I would, but I just, I don't, I can't. Um, uh, so, I mean, realistically, I've been, uh, you know, what I consider to be uh, a great compliant property owner in the city of West Palm for 20 years and have, uh, have a history, a track record of taking properties like the one I just showed you or, or this one and bring it into compliance and then making it realistically the best uh, property on, on the street, the best property in, in the neighborhood for that matter. Um, I've had uh, you know, huge compliments and thank yous from many neighbors on the street saying, you know, oh, we're thrilled, we love what you're doing, the place looks great. Uh, so. Okay. Yeah. All right, anything further from the city? Um, city definitely appreciates his professional demeanor. It was not the same a week ago. As I said, Ms. Williams was there for that meeting. Um, he made it very clear, his record in the city of, of fixing good properties, made it very clear his appreciation for code enforcement and the process, but that the process should not apply to him because he's such a good property owner and has such a good record. He, during the meeting, I, I straightforward asked what he expected out of that meeting and his answer was he expected the lien to be released that day. It was only after explaining we had no authority to do that, he then insisted, to say politely, uh, that he be on the first agenda, which would be today. Uh, he's only here today because he did qualify for it, not because we expedited anything. Um, the, the, the city is not going to countenance this kind of a, an attitude of, of holding the city hostage. It's unacceptable. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I I always give deference to property owners that inherit, or they inherit these issues, they were not the cause of them. Um, I also take into account the, the property appraiser's value of the property. Obviously, you've done improvements to it, so I'm sure it looks a lot nicer. I also take that into account. Um, 
you know, the money that you've spent to, to bring it up to city standard and beyond. Um, and then finally, I take a look too at how long were the liens running because there are staff costs and administrative costs in having to monitor properties for the length of time uh, that they may be out of compliance. So that kind of are all the factors that go into my, my analysis of what to reduce a lien to. And obviously the city has a recommendation as well. Um, this property, you, you did not cause these violations. But the one lien ran for 4,000 days, so I have to kind of think about what that means for the city from an administrative perspective. Um, so with that being said, for the case ending in 386, the fine total was $875,000. I'm going to reduce that down to $5,000. I think 3% is just, that's, that's too much of an ask given that the current property owner was not the one that caused the violation. So that will be $5,000 to cover mostly city administrative costs. May I uh, say one, one or two more things? Uh, of course, we, but I'm not changing my ruling, so oh, okay. you can, right, say, sure. you can okay, say what you would uh, like. Well, first, uh, I'm, I'm sorry that Mr. Posner feels uh, strongly, I, I haven't heard his this position, uh, this is the first I'm hearing of, of, of that. Uh, and I'm sorry he interpreted uh, the reality of my just being cash poor now and not being able without the construction lien. Uh, so, I mean, anyway, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Posner, that you feel that way. Uh, but number two, uh, I'm a guy, I have a construction van. I keep gloves and trash bags in my van. I pick up trash up and down the street. Uh, my property at Flagler, I've been uh, on and off dealing with Greg Mihalko, the city of West Palm has trash containers in front of Osprey Park that don't properly contain trash. Guess who picks up that trash every week? I've been doing it for three years. I've been asking Greg Mihalko, I don't know if you know who he is, in the yeah. Parks Department to get roll top trash canisters and the stuff blows everywhere. It blows, I mean, I, I'm, you know, so I'm the guy picking up the trash. I'm the guy with the orange gloves and the trash bags and doing the right thing. I pressure washed this sidewalk. It hasn't been pressure washed since 1990. I did in front of my neighbor on to the left and to the right. Uh, in terms of property ownership, uh, compliance, construction, uh, I do the right thing. Um, I'm legitimate and, and respectfully, uh, you know, I, I really didn't see Mr. Posner's uh, position and response being this way. I've had uh, a terrific uh, working relationship. And if you look around the room and Mr. Levine, uh, Mr. Williams, uh, Mr. You know, I don't see Mr. Lopez now, but he was here. Uh, I've had a great working track record with them uh, on the property, uh, anyway. That's all. Okay. Um, so for this this first case, it is going to be five thousand. Um, the question for you is time frame to pay. Um, obviously, you don't want it reverting back, but the rule is if you don't pay within the time I order, it does revert back to the full amount. So um, the the typical time frames are thirty days or sixty days. Um, well, or what, what can, is the total for all the liens? Because I that's like. Like that's my okay. end, that's my end of the road. Sure. Shake me upside so, down. So okay, I can do that. So for the case ending in <laughs> five five nine seven, the lien total was four hundred and eleven thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. <throat> I'm going to reduce that one down to three thousand dollars to cover city administrative costs and monitoring the property. Um, so total fines eight thousand for one point three million dollars in liens. Um, question for you, like I just said, is how much time? And I can give more than sixty days. Can I respectfully ask, could you please show a little more leniency, please? I, I can't. It was too... Uh, I mean, I, the conduit liens I paid had interest in... I mean, I paid for inspection fees, board and secure, lot clearing, re-inspection fees I've for taken years. All, I've taken all I've that into account, but those for. those were going to private entities. That wasn't going to the city. No, but there were, um, there were inspection fees and re-inspection fees and interest and interest and interest and... I, please, I mean, please. I, I can't. I can't. That that one in particular was over four thousand days. I don't even know how many years that is. That's that's. I mean, I, I, 07. I, I started a lot, you know, doing the landscaping of this property two months before I actually got certificate of title, <laughs> just to keep it. You know, I met with Joe Oliva and we did an action plan, and he was thrilled. I took all that into account, and I do appreciate your effort in bringing the property into compliance. Um, so you need like 190 days, 120 days? That's usually the maximum so time. So what's my, what will my total be to pay and get a release for all the liens? 8,000. All right. Well, do you have an, an answer as to time frame? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pay it. I mean, I'll pay it well, this when? week or next week. 
Okay, so if I ordered it within 30 days, that, that will be paid by the end of the 30 day time frame. Yeah. Yes, okay, I need, I, if it's not paid within that time, it does revert back. So that's if you need more time now, now it asks for it. No, I don't. Okay, so paid within 30 days or it reverts back to the full amount. And you'll need those two orders to take with you. Call There's one. payment, or it's just one? Okay, the payment instructions are on there. All right, thank you. Okay. I guess there's just the two, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, the only other case we have signed in is number eight, and we don't have police here yet, so I guess we'll go to the regular agenda. Uh, who are the gentlemen in the back? They're, they're for a pl the police case, I believe. Oh, I thought the other guy was here for... I thought so, too. Oh. Are you here for a police case, or are you here for a fine reduction? Fine reduction. Okay, what, what address, address are you? Omar okay, they're number two. Excellent. Number two, other matters, 736 Omar Road, CE 0707-1170. Case ending in 170 736 Omar Road. Date order 125007. Fine start at 125007. Number of days 3,275. Current total $327,500. $100 a day. Date of compliance 1122 of 16. Uh, same owner. There's absolutely no mitigating factors. They simply blame it on their own previous property manager. Uh, and this is a property that's been cited eight times under their ownership. Um, city's asking for 30%. Thank you. Ma'am, can I correct that? Yeah. Read my notes wrong. On that size of a lien, we we normally ask for thirty percent. We're asking for ten percent. Okay, <laughs> even ten percent. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. All right, I can do ten percent. I can figure that out in my head. <laughs> my math skills are not great. Okay. And you are. My name is Paul Krasker. I also have Damian Barr here, who's with the management company who took over the property okay. in two thousand sixteen. All right, what would you like to tell me? Hopefully not selling anything. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, can I get those names again? Paul Krasker and Damian Barr. I, I've got a designated agent form here saying Ned Grace is representing the owner for the hearing. I, I don't have either of these names and uh, Damian Barr works the for owner. Damian Barr works for the company that Ned Grace owns, Kanga Realty, and I've been corresponding with the city and um, spoke with Monique 15 times over last week, and she was the one who suggested we show up here today. Okay. Uh, Damien is, is a partner with, uh, with Ned and an owner of Kanga Realty who is authorized to be here on their behalf, and I'm an attorney representing a client. Okay. Okay. Officer Posner, it's Understood. an attorney. I, yeah, yes. I kind of overruled the Understood. objection. Okay. You go ahead and proceed. Thank you. Uh, the issues here in this case were twofold, um, and I believe the code officer, uh, Richard, is here today who can testify to the more recent activity. Uh, my client uh, moved out of state in 07. Uh, he was no longer here. He hired a management company. That management company hired a contractor who was not a licensed contractor, and uh, we thought this matter was taken care of uh, several years before 
uh, we received a notice of, of the fine. We gave a notice to the city to contact uh, the last management company, and they continued to send the address to the post office box, which had been abandoned five years earlier. So the first six years of this lien had really no impact on anybody because we had no notice of it. We hired a first management company that messed up the job, and we acknowledged it uh, horrible work and have subsequently sued, and, and the documents are in the case file to show uh, that, that we lost $5,500 there uh, to, the, uh, to the bad contractor. We hired a new contractor. They came in. They not only addressed the stairs, which were completed in 2016, as the code officer suggests, a, a while ago, but they've failed to close out the, the total permit for the stairs because there were other issues in the back. The other issue in the back was that there was a structure in the backyard that we believed to be grandfathered in and the city did not. And after two years of wrangling with the city, we just decided to demolish the structure and stop fighting. I don't think that's a reason why it should continue to accrue the fines which were resolved in 2016. So my client, an out of state uh, owner, doesn't feel like he did anything terribly wrong, uh, tried to act reasonably in all circumstances, and, um, and has hired a reputable company who has addressed all these issues plus many others uh, since they got involved. Um, just a question for you on the, the notice issue. You said that, did you change the address in the property appraiser records and the tax collector records? No, Your Honor, they did okay. not change it in the property appraiser's records. They came into City Hall. They gave notice that the new management company has taken over this property and would all future notices be going there. Mm -hmm. I understand it needs to be done in the property appraiser's office. Okay. Advise my client of that. To okay. be honest, it's still not done, um, and it's still going to his notice <laughs> they address to, in Atlanta. They really need to fix that. Yep. Okay. Because this will just keep happening, because the city's only required to send it to that. Property address on the property yes. appraiser's card, I understand, okay. and, and that's where we found ourselves. But, but I think uh, the code enforcement officer will, con will confirm that since our management company in 2016 We've done a great job. We've done everything that the city's asked us to do and been compliant. So, all right. City, have anything they want to follow up with? Uh, yes, one point of confusion. He said the fine continued to run. Date of compliance was 1122 of 16. The fines did not run past 2016 at all. It was only on the issue of the, the stairs without a permit. Um, and it ran for 3,275 days. Uh, I understand that the property com property management company didn't do it. That's a civil issue. It has nothing to do with the city. It's the owner's responsibility. So you're saying the reason that the fines ran through 2016 or that date you gave me is because of the stairs in the back? That was the big issue? Yes, ma'am. The stairs that needed a permit. We, we just means, haven't course, been able to come here for a reduction hearing until everything was compliant. Right. But, but it did stop in 16 as far as accrual of $100 a day. Okay, we I agree. understand. Okay, so the, the structure in the back, that was done before the 2016 compliance date then, right? The demolishment of that? That was done after as part of complying for the, the lien reduction. You have to be free of all violations. Oh, it was I never actually that. cited. No fines ran regarding that structure. They simply had to resolve that okay. to get here. We but couldn't no come fines to see you until that was issue. done. Yeah. But and, we're and talking... We, we were hoping to keep the structure, which is why it took as long as it took. Okay, so your point was you're, you weren't just ignoring this for Correct. three years. You were actually negotiating with the city about what would happen on these other violations. Correct. Okay, I understand. Well, it seems they ignored it for nine years. Whether it was lack of knowledge or not, but ran for Well, no, what years. I'm saying is they came into compliance in 2016, and then they were it, dealing with other, bringing the property into compliance on other violations to get here. For, for the first six years, we didn't know about it. For the next three years, we hired an inferior company. Uh, and then for the last year, we hired a company that got a resolved. Okay. That's the reality. All right. Anything further from anyone? No. Okay. All right. 
Okay, this is what I'm going to do. Um, these notice ones are always hard. People always come and say that they didn't know about it. And at the end of the day, the city did what it was supposed to do and sent it to the right place, according to the, the state statute. So, you know, it, the property management company or the owner or whoever, you know, always stay up and follow up on getting your addresses correct in the property appraiser and tax collector records because that's what the city relies on. And unfortunately, I hear this over and over again that I didn't get it. Well, was your address right with the property appraiser? No, it wasn't. And, and then it's kind of like, well, the city didn't do anything wrong there. Um, this fine did run for a good amount of time. It was over 3,000 days. So you heard me say to the last person that was up here, I have to take into account some kind of administrative costs for the city and having to monitor the property. And, and also just, you know, I know it was the property management company, but it, it, it does fall on the owner to keep the, the property in compliance. Um, and lack of notice in this case, I, I can't even hear that as a reason because again, this, it wasn't the city's fault. They sent everything to the right place. Um, what I am gonna do though, because the property value is on the lower side, the property appraiser is showing this property to be valued around $160,000. I, I'm, I'm, that's weighing heavily on my decision here. Um, so the fine amount is $327,500. I'm gonna reduce that down to $10,000 uh, to cover city administrative costs, and this was caused by the same owner, so you don't get the benefit of it being a new owner. Um, question for you is how much time does the owner need to pay this? Um, you heard me say before, if it's not paid within the time I order, it does revert back, so. Um, 60 days, please. 60. Okay, so it'll be $10,000 within 60 days, or it does revert back to the full amount. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Before I walk away again, is my other only introduction next? <laughs> I'm sorry, my apologies. We have another one? I, I oh. don't believe, I think we only have number eight here. That's all I have. So right. do you want to flip back to the regular agenda? <laughs> yes. <laughs> My apologies for that. I'm, I'm sure the other code officers would like that as well. No. Okay. Number 35540 North Haverhill Road, CE1901375. Don Williams, Code Enforcement. For the record, this is unit number 76. Uh, I cited this property on January 22nd, 2019. Certified mail was sent out February 28th, 2019. I posted this property March 21st, 2019. As of yesterday, all the violations still exist. Um, I have contact with the tenant and the landlord is working on all the violations. So I'm actually asking only an additional 30 days to comply or $100 a day thereafter. So the city has had contact with the owner, just not you? No, uh, with you the have. tenant, not the owner. Oh, got it. But the, the tenant the told you the landlord is doing something. Correct. Yes. Got it. All right. Additional 30 days of 100. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There are postings in the file. The property is in violation of sections 18103C, 18103E, 18103G, 18105I, 18-95A, and 18-97-9. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date or a $100 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Thank you. Number four is rescheduled, 540 Clamata Street, one, CE1901-0468. Number six, 420 Roseland Drive, CE1903-0090. Good morning. Code Officer Richard Pasmino for the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on March 7th, 2019. Certified mail was sent March 8th, 2019, and the property was posted on March 8th, 2019. This property was cited for 18106A, 18106B, 18215B, 74-4-C4, and 74-4-C5. I have had contact with the owner who lives in Hong Kong um, the tenant took care of most of the issues. Um, the work is incomplete. The, there's a broken fence at the rear of the property which was cited in another notice. Um, and it's visible that the backyard has not 
complied the overgrowth and trash and debris. Um, I emailed the owner yesterday and got correspondence this morning that it will be taken care of. The city's recommending 15 additional days for the property to come into compliance or an order to abate the violations. So the tenant has done work, but they haven't complied any of the sections. It's they complied the visible stuff, but because the fence is down, that it's apparent that they still they are still in violation. Okay, so they're still in violation of all the code sections you cited. Yes. Got it. Okay. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notices good and sufficient. There's a posting in the file, and there has been actual contact with the owner. The property is in violation of sections 18106A, 18106B, 18215B, 74-4C4, and 74-4C5. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 15 days from today's date, or the city is authorized to enter the property and abate the health, safety, and welfare violations that exist. And the city will be entitled to any abatement costs and reinspection fees. Thank you. Number nine is complied. 4211 San Marino Boulevard, CE 1901032. Number 10, 4211 San Marino Boulevard, number 101, CE 1901032. Good morning, Officer Levine, City of West Palm Beach Code. This property was cited for failure to obtain a rental license. Um, certified mail was returned and the property was posted on 3-21-2019. The property is occupied. The city is requesting 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day thereafter. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There is a posting in the file. The property is in violation of sections 22-32A and 18-162A. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date, or a $200 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Number 11-636-47 Street, CE 1902-0173. Um, that property is complied as the uh, respondent did come into City Hall this morning and resolve all of the uh, remaining issues concerning that property. Number 12, 420 48th Street, CE 1902 uh, Michael Williams, Code Enforcement Officer, City of West Palm Beach. Property 420 48th Street uh, was cited on 2-22-19. Certified mail was sent on 2-14-19. Uh, we do have a certified um, mail receipt. Um, the property as well as City Hall was posted on 22619. Um, property was cited for uh, broken uh, windows, broken and or boarded windows, uh, trash and debris on the property, painting of the structure, uh, hanging of clothes, uh, garbage can placement in public view, sodding of the swell, uh, fence and disrepair, uh, landscaping of the uh, property and also outdoor storage. As of last evening, um, all of the code sections were uh, complied. The only remaining code sections are 78-94-C and also 94-442-C-1. I did speak to um, the respondent over the phone. They are aware of the fact that um, they need to do further landscaping in both uh, the swell as well as the property. So it is requesting 30 additional days in order to comply or a fine of $150 per day be imposed. Well, at least they did a good amount of the work. That's yes, good. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There is a signed certified mail receipt and a posting in the file, and there has been actual contact with the owner. The property has come into compliance with sections 18103E, 18106A, 18106G, 54-262, 74-34A1J, 94-302A4, and 94-71C. The property remains in violation of sections 78-94C and 94-442C1. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date or a $150 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Thank you. Number 14 is complied, 512 Biscayne Drive, CE 1902047. Number 15, 631 Nathan Hill Road, CE 1902163. That's you, Officer Lopez. <laughs> Good 
Number 15631 Nathan Hill Road. Okay. Good morning, Special Magistrate. Alex Lopez with the City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Property located at 631 Nathan Hill Road is a residential rental property that was cited for stains, mildew, and peeling paint on the exterior of the building. Junk vehicles, vehicle obstructing the right of way, unpaved parking, and outdoor storage. Your Honor, I last spoke with the property owner on March 14th, 2019, who informed me he would have the violations corrected, but unfortunately they were not. So all the code sections remain in violation. For this, the city requests a daily fine of $100 if not complied within 30 days. The notice has been mailed certified and first class posted, and there has been contact with the property owner. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There is a posting in the file, and there has been actual contact with the owner. The property is in violation of sections 18106G, 34-102A, 78-1, 94-482A, and 94-71C. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date, or a $100 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 166202, Washington Road, CE1902329. Alex Lopez with the City of West Palm Beach. Code enforcement property located at 6202 Washington Road is a residential property that was cited for required inspections of an open building permit, unpaved parking, and for expired building permits. Special Magistrate to date, Code Section 94482A has complied. The remaining code sections remain in violation. Your Honor, at the time of my posting the property, I attempted contact at the residence, which I was unable to achieve. And unfortunately, I have not received any correspondence from the property owner. For this, the city requests a daily fine of $100 if not complied within 30 days to correct the remaining violations. The notice has been mailed certified and first class posted, and there has been no contact from the property owner. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There is a posting in the file. The property has come into compliance with section 94-482A. The property remains in violation of sections 110.1 and 105.4.1.3 of the Florida Building Code. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date or a $100 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 17427 Macy Street, CE1903052. Alex Lopez with the City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Property located at 427 Macy Street is a residential property that was cited for being occupied without having an active water account, trash and debris, and failure to comply. Your Honor, this property was recently adjudicated for other violations which are currently accruing fines at $1,000 per day. I bring this to your attention because the neighbor, neighboring residents and the city are again dealing with this property that continues to create a hostile environment negatively affecting the health, safety, and welfare of the occupants and the neighborhood. I was first notified by a tenant who was living out of her vehicle, which was parked in the front yard, that the water had been shut off for some time. When I researched the property, I saw that the water was cut off on June 27, 2018 for non-payment. On August 13th, 2018, the water meter was turned off again as it was determined that it was illegally turned back on. On September 14th, 2018, the utility department ultimately removed the water meter from the site for non-payment, which currently stands at $1,294.79 and its illegal use. This did not deter or resol resolve the problem as the occupants continue to reside at the property using water jugs as a water source and the grounds as their bathroom. Your Honor, I have spoken several times with the property owner's daughter, who is well aware of the continuing violations. She stated that her parents reside in Finland, but that she would have the water turned on. Ultimately, that was not the case as all, as all the code violations, all the code sections remain in violation. Special Magistrate, because of the continued extreme conditions currently taking place, affecting the health, safety, and welfare of the occupants and the neighboring properties, the city is requesting that the property be vacated and boarded by city abatement. I have also informed the respondent of the building being boarded should the property remain occupied without water, which she acknowledged. 
The notice has been mailed, certified, and first class posted, and there has been contact with the property owner's daughter. And as witnessed here today by the lack of a respondent at the hearing, it shows complete disregard for the violations and the property. I have also included attachments of the utility log showing the current balance and the inactivity of a water account for this property. Okay. Do you know how many people are residing in there right now? Uh, currently, at my last inspection, it was three. Okay. Do they have personal effects in the house, most uh, likely? Most likely, but I, I, at one time there were more individuals living there. By an updated photograph, you'll see that the one tenant who was living out of her vehicle um, has since uh, been removed from the property. Okay. Um, the back unit in that picture there, there is a, a gentleman who um, has removed his items, so that's why we're down at three. So there are still a few there. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to be continuing to live there or not. The, uh, well, you're asking me to board and secure it, so mm -hmm. this is... Yeah, there are no children involved, there are no pets, um, and I have spoken with the tenants there, and they are all aware that there may be um, interaction from the city to board up this property, so they little by little they have been removing their items. I, I, will, I will grant your abatement order. Um, I just, I want to give some notice by postings to the people that are actually occupying the property that hey on this day the city's coming and boarding and securing mm -hmm. if you need to remove your personal property do so before that date otherwise it could be gone sure is there are you agreeable to doing some postings just to give the, the people that are occupying we don't have a problem is i don't know their rights as tenants i don't know if they actually are tenants or if they're squatters i don't i don't know so i'd feel better if you could post that you're coming in on a date. Is that something that, that we're able to do? I mean, is, is this notice sufficient? Or well, it's we just, it's just additional notice. Yeah. I mean, you would, I would just, I would like some notice posted that on this day, the city is coming and boarding and securing and you will not be able to reenter the property. Mm -hmm. and that's something that I, yes, okay. that, um, uh, it could be a 48 hour notice so that, uh, something so they can get their stuff out. Cause correct. If, I, again, we don't know if they're legal tenants or not. You can, I think you can post the abatement order, yeah, and get okay. the notice with a time, sure, like a, I don't know, mm -hmm. red tag sticker or something that you guys use to. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so with that, it would it would request a um, a three day abatement. Okay. Um, so I can go ahead and get that property posted. And so then, three days or the abatement. Correct. And then you can get it posted. Got it. All right. <clears throat> Three days is going to put you into the weekend. Do you want it to be five days or two days? Let's do the two days. Yes. So you're able to go post today? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions. Lominify notices good and sufficient. There is a posting in the file and there has been actual contact with a representative for the owner. The property is in violation of sections 18-102-1. 18106A and 18-215B. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within two days from today's date or the city is authorized to enter the property and abate the serious health safety, and self, health safety and welfare violations that exist on the property, which include but shall not be limited to boarding and securing the property and preventing re-entry into the property from any occupants, whether legal or illegal. Um, and the city will be entitled to all abatement costs and reinspection fees. The one caveat to my order is that the city does post a notice of 48 hours to any occupants that the city will be boarding and securing the property with a time and a date um, so that they can collect any personal effects that they need to remove from the property. Okay? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Number 18, 627 34th Street, CE 19020272. Joe Patrick, West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This case is reference to a single family resident that was issued notice of violation via certified mail and posting on February 21st for keeping of chickens on the property, windows and doors in disrepair, holes and cracks in the exterior of the house. The structures also need a painting. Offenses need a repair. The irrigation system is not working and the uh, lawn is in need of restoration. 
The notice of violation was requ required the respondent to remove the chickens within 10 days and 30 days to repair or replace the windows and door, paint the exterior to structure, repair the exterior structure, replace or repair the damaged fence, and to uh, repair the irrigation system and restore the landscaping. As of today, the property remains out of compliance. I have not heard from the respondent. The city is asking for 30 days to comply or a $200 day fine. Or 200? Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There is a posting in the file. The property is in violation of sections 14-1, 18-103E, 18-106G, 94-302A4, and 94-446-2. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date or a $200 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 203021 Pinewood Ave, CE 19020403. Joe Patrick, West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This case is reference to a resident that was issued a notice of violation via certified mail and posting on March 1st for exterior lights and disrepair. No permit for a section of a fence that was installed. Other, other areas of the fence is damaged and in need of repair. Landscaping is in need of restoration. There's no rental license on the property. Um, there's, there was inoperable unregistered vehicles on the property and there's a camper being stored on the property. The notice of violation gave 30 days to comply for the fence by obtaining a permit to repair the remaining, to repair the remaining fence Okay, so let me back up here. The notice of violation gave 30 days to comply by obtaining a permit for the fence and then for also to repair the, the damage fence, to get a permit for the section that was put up without a permit, take care of the whole fence situation, whatever they want to. Sure. 10 days to repair or replace the exterior lights and landscaping, 10 days to obtain a rental license, and 10 days to remove the camper, camper and inoperable vehicles. As of today, only the inoperable vehicles have been removed. So section 34-102A is in compliance. All the other code violations remain. I have not heard from the uh, respondent. The city is asking for 30 days to comply or a $200 day fine be assessed. And you said you posted the property? Yes, I did, on February 21st. Okay, great. I'm gonna make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm gonna find notice is good and sufficient. There is a posting in the file. The property is in violation of sections 18103I, 18106C, um, 105.1, which is Florida Building Code, 18106L, 18162A, 94-302A4, and 94-487B1. Section 34-102A is coming to compliance. For the sections that remain in violation, the respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date, or a $200 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Thank you. <clears throat> On to other matters. Number eight. CE 19020386125 Daytona Street, Avocado Grill. I need to be uh, sworn in. Okay, great. Anyone else need to be sworn in? Uh, Mr. Grimaud, the owner of Avocado Grill. Okay. Um, for anyone he that's here for any other matters, uh, all testimony has to be under oath. So if you're going to be speaking on one of these cases, if you can raise your right hand and I'll swear everyone in. This includes anyone out in the audience, too. You gonna be speaking? Right yep, okay. <laughs> do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Agent Colvin, City of West Palm Beach Police Department. On Friday, January 25th, 2019, I was working part of an undercover operation to check uh, point of sale vendors for alcohol that they're properly checking ID before selling, al uh, selling alcohol. Um, in order to complete this tax, I used um, two underage uh, buyers who were aged 19 at the time of the operation. At approximately 23, 30 hours, the confidential sources entered Avocado Grill at 125 Daytura Street. Upon entering the establishment, they made contact with a white uh, male bartender, ordered um, Corona Light, and were served those beers without that being asked their age or uh, asked for proper identification. Um, the, uh, a picture was obtained of the alcohol and uh, of, the, of the server, and uh, they were uh, issued notice. This is their first offense in, in multiple years, um, so we're not going to ask for a, a large fine worth $250, and uh, if they would agree, um, uh, train through uh, any, any sort of uh, substance abuse training or point-of-sale vendor uh, training. 
and then they provide you the proof back within six months. But that's just a, a request, not um, not doesn't an have order. To be ordered. So just the two hundred and fifty dollar fine with a recommendation that they Correct. do some point of service training with yeah. their employees. Correct. Like I said, it's their first offense. Um, okay. That I know of. And they, they have been open for a number of years without any violations Correct. in the past. Okay. All right. Great. Hi. Good morning. Hi, Your Honor. My name is Matthew Schwenke. I'm a lawyer with a, a Searcy Denny Scroll, a Barnhart and Shipley. I represent the Avocado Grill. Uh, with me is Charlie Barnett. He represents the landlord. I do have some questions for the officer, if I may so inquire. Of course. Go ahead. Officer, uh, on January 25th of 2019, what time did you enter uh, the premises with... Uh, the two individuals. I did not enter the premises. Okay. I stayed. I stayed out uh, on the uh, street. Okay. So the Avocado Grill is a restaurant. Um, there's tables where people are eating uh, dinner. Correct. Correct. And there's also a small bar area. Correct. Okay. And, this, ex this... and exterior um, tables as well. All right. And and I saw in your in your report, it's referenced as a lounge or a nightclub. That's not true. It's really it's a restaurant with a bar, right? Correct. Okay. And so you never actually physically walked into the premises whatsoever? I did not, no. And how far away would you say you were from the bar? Uh, I'd say at least 20 feet or so. I was on the other side of the street from, uh, you know, closer to the, the uh, park. Okay. The, the, the amphitheater. You were, so, so to be clear, Avocado Grill is on the corner, there's a sidewalk, then there's a roadway, and you were on the other side of the roadway on that Correct. sidewalk? For this one, yes. If I told you that was about 60 feet, would you have any reason to disagree? No. Okay. And what time did these two individuals enter the premises? Uh, around 11.30. And um, your report doesn't give the name of the two individuals, correct? Correct. All right. Um, did you bring the two individuals here for me to cross-examine them about their age? I did not. All right. Um, you uh, indicated that they were uh, served uh, two Corona lights in a bottle, according to your report? Correct. All right. The photographs provided, and I know they're marked for the record, are you able to see the actual photograph of uh, what you claim to be the alcohol that was provided to these individuals? Yeah, it's behind, well, it was behind you. Um, is that a Corona light? Um, I'm going to pull it back up. If I can approach? No, sure. that's fine. Sure. Uh, corona Extra. Okay. So, so your report claims they were served Corona Lights. That's not the case. It's a Corona Extra, correct? Correct. Still an alcoholic beverage. Yes, sir. Uh, the, uh, uh, you indicate that the individuals paid for uh, this alcohol with a receipt, uh, with, with cash, I'm sorry. Correct. All right. And this is cash that you gave them that correct. they paid the bartender for? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you have the receipt, sir? No. Most uh, times I'm not given receipts at, uh, at bars uh, for, for that. But. Okay. Do you know if that's the case in this situation? I was not given a receipt, uh, and they've been, they've, every time that I've used these uh, two individuals, if there was a receipt given, it was, uh, it was handed to me. Okay. So it may so, not have been one. So. So, so to be clear then, and I don't mean to speak over you, I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. To be clear, when you've used these individuals before and a receipt has been given, uh, they've provided that to you? Yes. All right. And in this situation, you were not provided with a receipt whatsoever? Correct. Um, and what, uh, approximately what time of night uh, was uh, the, the service of alcohol that you claimed occurred from about 60 feet across the road? 11.30. Okay. Okay. No further questions from this witness, Your Honor. May I uh, put Mr. Grimaud on the stand? Sure. Uh, Mr. Grimaud, would you please uh, introduce yourself to the court and uh, tell them a little bit about who you are? Hi, I'm Julian Grimaud. I'm the owner of Avocado Grill. Um, we have this location on 125 Detroit for the past uh, five years, and I have also a uh, new location in Palm Beach Garden for the past year. Mr. Grimaud, did I ask you to uh, go for the night of January 25th, 2019, to search for cash transactions that occurred at your restaurant between, uh, what was it, 10.30 p.m. and 12 o'clock a.m.? Yes, uh, so we research a POS, um, um, to see if there was any cash transaction done after between 10 to midnight on the 25th, and we couldn't find anything. Okay. Um, and you said something for, you said POS. Can you explain to the court what POS is? 
point of sale. So if a bartender is, uh, if any, any guest is ordering a drink, the bartender has to enter in the POS, provide the drinks to the guest, and of course uh, the POS keeps track of that, which is, um, you know, could be audited by the IRS, could be audited by the Department of Revenue. And um, did you, uh, after you searched your system yourself to see if there was any purchases of alcohol on the 25th between that time frame, did you also reach out to your POS vendor to, for them to search their records to confirm? Uh, absolutely. We, we, we reached out to them to see um, if they could find something that we couldn't find, although we have the same access uh, to the, the, the point of sale. And um, they actually couldn't find anything, and they wrote uh, an email stating that there was no, transact no cash transaction done on that day. And no ca cash transactions done for specifically alcohol, correct? Correct. Were you able to ever find any purchases of Corona or Corona Light that occurred on the evening of the 25th whatsoever? No. If a bartender uh, creates a, tra uh, if, strike that, if someone orders two alcoholic beverages from your restaurant, is a transaction created by your employee? Yes. How, can you explain to the court how that occurs? Uh, like I said, if, if they enter in the PO, when they enter in the POS, that would show you the PM, the name of the PM bomb, the name of the bartender, and the transaction done. Did, uh, and we'll attach some evidence for the record, Your Honor. Um, we've referenced what we'll attach as Exhibit 1 as an email from your POS vendor. And if you look through the email, uh, does the email indicate that any alcohol transactions occurred during that time period? No. Also, in case the officer was mistaken by a couple days about the day this occurred, did you also go back and review transactions on the 23rd, the 24th, and 26th to see if any cash transactions for Corona or Corona Light had occurred during that time period? Yes, I did. And are these uh, uh, transactions, which we'll mark as exhibits two, three, and four, uh, contained right here? Yes. And are there any transactions for the order of uh, Corona or Corona Light alcoholic beverages on the other dates? No. And I actually went even further during the whole week and uh, could not find any of those transactions. May I approach? Sure. You want these admitted into the record, or what do you want me to do with these? I would like them to be admitted into the record, yes. And we need to, you need to show these to the sure. city attorney and go over with her what those are, and she'll let me know if she has any objections to those. Thank you. <laughs> do you have any objections? I don't have any objections. Um, I will have a couple of questions for the gentleman, and I may need to refer possibly to this at the time. Okay, so let me, um, I'll admit those into, let me identify them for the record because there was a bunch of stuff right here. Thank you. Okay, so I'm not sure I'm getting these. So these have been collated for me, right? These are like one document here? Yeah, so, okay. so you can right. So it looks like I have the email. This is from the point of service or point of sale vendor dated April 2nd, 2019. It was talking about transactions on the night of the 25th. <coughs> and there are a few three pages. three pages attached to that email. Then I also have a bar cash transaction log from January 23rd, 2019. A yes. transaction log from January 24th, 2019, and a transaction log from January 6th, or 26th, 2019. So I'm admitting these documents into the record without objection from the city. I'm going to label these as the uh, let's see this point of sale email I'll do as Respondent Exhibit 1, January 23rd, 2019, Transaction Log, Respondent Exhibit 2, January 24th, 2019, Transaction Log, Respondent Exhibit 3, and the January 26th, 2019, Transaction Log will be 
respondent exhibit four. So you can take these back, city attorney, if you need to refer to these in questioning or if, and then you can hand them back to me if I need them. Thank you. May I continue? Yes, go Thank ahead. Uh, Mr. Gamad, did I also ask you to pull up the clock in and clock out time for the bartender who was working on the evening of the 25th? And could you say his name, please? Yes, Nikolai Mezatsev. Okay. And what time did he clock out at? 11.57 p.m. And could you explain for the court everything a bartender has to do before he clocks out? Sure. Uh, when when the uh, usually the bar empties out or the bar, the, the uh, service at the bar is over, uh, the bartender has to go into uh, the restocking room where all the liquors and all the bottles of uh, water and wine and beers are stocked. And um, in our case, it is an upstairs into uh, the restaurant, so they have to go up there and restock for the next day, and then clean the entire bar. How long does it take for a bartender? And let, let strike that. Let's be clear. When a bartender begins to close up the bar for the night, has he stopped alcoholic service uh, completely to start cleaning up? Absolutely. How long does it take for the bartender, by the time he stops the service of alcohol, to clean up the bar? It would take uh, 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes okay. on average. And the officer, you heard him testify that uh, the individuals walked into the bar around 11.30 p.m. Uh, and were served sometime thereafter. Uh, your bartender clocked out at 11.57 p.m. that evening. Do you believe there's any chance he could have served a glass of alcohol and closed out the bar within 27 minutes? It would be impossible. Uh, the next exhibit, which I think would be five, Your Honor, I'll show it to the city attorney. Okay, show it to her first, please. And identify it for me. Yeah. What is it? It is Nikolai Mestayev's uh, clock in and clock out record for January 25, 2019. We would ask to no that. objection. Okay, let me mark that real quick. All right, we will admit respondent exhibit five without objection. Okay, do you need this one back as well? Um, I don't think so. Okay, I'll hold on to that. All right. And to wrap this up, Mr. Grimaud, uh, you've heard you've been in business for a long time with your restaurant. Have you uh, been compliant with the uh, responsible vendor law since your inception? Yes, we have to uh, do four classes per year. Uh, our insurance requires for us to be compliant uh, um, with the SURF program. Um, and I actually myself attend every single meetings at both restaurants. Uh, every trimester at each restaurant. And did you, uh, at my request, did you reach out to your, uh, your current vendor from the SERV program and did he provide you with information showing you're compliant with the responsible vendor law and did he write a letter to the judge confirming your compliance? Yes, he did. All right, Your Honor, I'm gonna show this to the city attorney and I'd like to admit this in evidence as well. No objection. Okay. There, there's two documents there? Yes. Are they? Okay, I'm gonna do this as a composite. Looks like they're from the same entity, serve. All right. I'm gonna admit this without objection. I'm gonna mark it as respondent exhibit composite exhibit six. Your Honor, last uh, but not least, uh, Mr. Gramat, is this the notice of violation um, uh, for the hearing today, April 3rd, 2019, at 11 o'clock in the morning? It is. And can you read who it's to? Bradley's Properties, LLC. Okay. Is that your business? No, it's not. What is your business? Avocado Grill. All right. Judge, we just object to uh, due process to Avocado Grill as it pertains to this violation it's being sent to Bradley's Properties, LLC. I do know that uh, Mr. Barnett, uh, their lawyer, is here. And with that, uh, nothing further. Okay, thank you. You have a response to that objection on the notice? Uh, the, uh, 
the the property was the one we were uh, issuing it to. The property is the one that has the liquor license. So the uh, the property owner is the one that who, who needs to make sure that his tenants are properly uh, obeying. Oh, I understand. So the Bradley LLC, what you're telling me is that is the property owner of the, the of the property building. that Avocado rents from them, and the property the prop the liquor license is attached to the the property itself, not the business. Okay. Do you have a response to that? I, I don't believe that's correct. Bradley's property is not the operating entity that. You're the owner of the property. Is that accurate? We own the property, but we lease it to. Julie. Correct. Who, who owns the liquor license? Is it the address or is it the... I, uh, I do. And so we just object. The notice is clearly to Bradley's properties and not to Mr. Grimaud. Avocado Grill is Julian's Brasserie LTD doing business as Avocado Grill. Okay. Well, so I'm going to overrule that objection. And the reason why is we are in code enforcement world and code enforcement world is all about the property owner. So at the end of the day, the property owner is responsible for all activities that occur on the property, tenant or otherwise. Um, so with respect to that objection, I'm overruling it. Okay. Um, just for clarification, just, just so I understand, I'm not asking you to reconsider your ruling. Uh, so as far as it pertains, as this violation pertains, it does not pertain to Avocado Grill, who's the tenant and not the owner, if I understand what you're saying. How does the city handle the fine amount? It's normally the, the businesses. Do you want to clarify that? Good morning, Stacy Weinger, Assistant City Attorney. Pursuant to Chapter 162 Florida Statutes, notice is given to the property owner. Any fine that's imposed, if the fine is not timely paid and a lien results against the property, the lien is recorded in the name of the property owner. Correct. So that's, that's my the basis well. for giving notice under 162. It requires us to notice the property owner of record. Okay. And, and my only objection is then. I do not believe that would pertain to the business then, which is Julian's Brasserie LTD DBA Avocado Grill. And that's my objection for any entry of any order against that business. But I know Bradley's Properties does have a lawyer here, so. <laughs> okay. Yes, and, and we, since we don't operate the business, I would object to having any imposition of a fine against Bradley's Properties. Well, that's not how Chapter 162 works, though, and that's the process that we're in. Just like the city attorney said, that's my understanding of the state statute as well. So whatever happens on the property, at the end of the day, the property owner is ultimately responsible for it. That's why the notice gets sent to the property owner. That's why a lien would get imposed against the property owner. Um, the city's only asking for a $250 fine for the, the alleged violation, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, but um, so my overruled objection stands on that. Okay. Um, did you have any other witnesses that you need to no, Your Honor. bring to my attention? Thank okay. You for your time. Um, would the city attorney like to ask any follow-up questions? Arlene Frankener on behalf of the city. Um, Sir, what was your last name? I apologize. Grimaud. Grimaud. Grumar? Grimaud. Grimaud. Yes. Okay, Mr. Grimaud, I just have a few questions with regard to some of the things that you spoke about earlier. Uh, the bartender, Mr. Nikolai, and I can't pronounce his last name, I apologize. How long has he been bartending for avocado, approximately? Uh, about a month. Okay. Pro a month prior to the infraction. Or okay, very good. And is he still with Avocado Grill? No, I terminated him. Uh, for what? For the accusation that I received uh, saying that he served a minor. Okay. And at the, since he had only been there for approximately one month prior to this um, incident, had he received uh, any of the beverage training that we've been talking about? No, here? the law requires, um, the, law, uh, the law allows you to... Um, to take three months until you have to train somebody it, because it's every trimester and he was in the middle, so we, he did not get the training. Okay. And you talked a little bit about uh, him clocking in and clocking out. I believe I heard that uh, when he stops service for the night and goes to do his restocking and his cleanup duties, um, does he actually record or clock out the time when he stops his service as a bartender? That would be recorded by the point of sale. So if there is no transaction after a certain time, that means nobody is at the bar. Okay. So
So do we have any specific um, any specifics that you can point to to show that he had stopped at a particular time other than what's on the exhibits that you submitted for his point of sales? In other words, uh, could there be a situation where the last beer he happened to sell might have been 10 or 15 minutes before he actually stopped his service? So there's still another 10 or 15 minutes that are not reflected on his point of sales, right? No, because as soon as he would ring something in the POS system, it would show you the transaction. Sure, but in other words, could then he still be working another 10, 15, 30 minutes, not having any sale whatsoever show in the system? Yeah. Okay. Um, in terms of... Is there anything that prevents your bartenders from not entering a POS sale or cash sale? I wish. So we could have sold and not entered. I object to two different uh, people questioning, Your Honor. Uh, sustained. Let's just have the questions coming from one party, please. Okay. Um, so is it possible that Nikolai could have uh, not recorded a POS sale? It is possible. Had there ever been any other instances of Nikolai not recording a POS sale? No. How many bartenders were working that night? Do you know? I did, uh, two, two that night, and the first bartender was cut around 10 p.m. I'm sorry, the first? The, first, the other bartender was cut around 10 oh, p.m., so he was alone at, at the bar. Okay. But there was also two managers on duty. Okay. When was the last they ever saying he was closed down? They still serve. And when's the last time they served alcohol? Okay. Um, and when was the last sale? I would have to look through that sheet, but it was pretty early. Um, the, the email would show you what the last tra the transition, transaction was. Did the um, document that you submitted regarding the POS sales, did it identify? Uh, which product was being sold or purchased? Absolutely. Okay. The POS will show you any transaction, at what time it was entered in the computer, at what time it was paid, and what it was. Can, can you show me that? I'm, I, I'm not seeing it, or is it up there? It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't be on there. If, uh, if you didn't is this it. the... Is the clock Number five. This shows when he clocked in and out. I don't know if this shows his... Points of sale. No, that's fine. Is it this? What I'm still not seeing, sir, is that it's recording whether or not a particular Corona was sold or some other beverage. If there was a Corona sold, you would see a transaction and it would say okay. it's two Corona. Okay. If, and that's if it was entered, correct? Yes. Okay. And do you agree that it's possible that the bartender may not have entered? He can go back to the microphone. Uh, just object to ask and answered. <clears throat> Overruled. Just answer it again. Yeah, it is possible that an employee doesn't ring a drink. Yes. Okay. But we do keep a, cl a close track of our inventory, and we um, did not notice that anything was missing. Okay. And uh, just for the record, the bartender, Nikolai, you didn't bring him here today. Is that correct? No. Uh, 
Um, I have a couple of questions for Mr. Colvin. Okay, so we're, we're done with this witness and we're moving on to, you're doing a rebuttal? I believe so. Okay, yep. go for it. Yep. Right, just real quick to, uh, uh, to address uh, one issue. I was with them immediately before they stepped into the store and immediately following the, their store. Obviously when they went into the store, they did not have a, uh, an alcoholic beverage. As you can see by the two beverages that, that in front of them, they were recently opened and recently refrigerated and then they immediately came out of the store with those in their hands. So the confidential sources did come out with the alcohol. In yes, their they hands. came out with us, made con made contact with us, and, we and they went in without alcohol. They went in without. Okay. Thank you. May I follow up on that? Of course. Um, that what you just said about the individuals coming outside with the cold alcohol is not in your report, is it, officer? No, it's not. You're a, you're a West Palm, city of West Palm Beach police officer, is that correct? Correct. Your job is to enforce the law, correct? Correct. All right. And what you are saying happened here on that evening in question was a, a male bartender served two underage individuals uh, with alcohol when he shouldn't have, correct? Correct. Is that a crime? Uh, it is. Did you arrest the bartender? I did not. Nothing further. Okay. Um... Anyone want to have any, since we're doing a mini trial apparently, <laughs> anyone want to have any uh, closing arguments? <laughs> uh, I, I have a quick summation. I think okay. the burden of proofs on the city of West Palm Beach, so if they want to start, um, they're free to start. Otherwise, I have a very quick summation. Uh, Magistrate, I believe that the city has shown that there's proper notice, that there is um, competent evidence to show that the incident occurred and that um, all particular requirements of the statute and the code sections have been complied with on the city's part, and we would ask you to um, um, make a finding of same and assess that this is the first offense with the recommended fine and possibly volunteer additional training. Okay, all right, yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm sorry for taking as long as I did. It's this okay. is <laughs> very important to the avocado grill. Um, the city of West Palm Beach has the burden here. Um, the officer testified uh, that he was there on the day in question at least 60 feet across the street. He was not in a position to observe this transaction. He was not given a receipt. Um, his duty and responsibility is to enforce the law. He's alleging a crime happened here and that he didn't arrest the individual responsible for the crime. That doesn't make sense unless it didn't occur or unless the two individuals who were allegedly under the age of 21 who are not here for me to cross-examine weren't under the age of 21. I submit to you there is no competent evidence for you to consider when the burden of proof is on the city of West Palm Beach that uh, this allegation occurred that evening. Furthermore, we brought our own evidence because we take this seriously. We submitted record evidence to you. That they show no transaction whatsoever for Corona, Corona Light, or bottles of alcohol. Mr. Grimaud testified they do an inventory of their alcohol. They're not missing bottles of alcohol for that evening. And to suggest that this was the one time that this bartender didn't put something in a point of sale system just is speculation and not competent evidence. I, we are asking that you dismiss this on behalf of, uh, of the Avocado Grill. And I'll let uh, Bradley's lawyer speak very briefly as to Bradley's. Yes, I agree with Mr. Schwenke and would also request that it be dismissed as to Bradley's properties. Okay, anything further from anybody? No, Your Honor. Okay, all right. So, let's be honest here with ourselves. There was hearsay on both sides abounding today. We've got letters from vendors and bartenders not here and people testifying as to procedures of bartenders when the bartenders aren't here to say that yes, that's the procedure I followed. We've got a questioning about confidential sources not being here and not being able to cross-examine them. So I'm in a process where strict rules of evidence don't apply. So any, any complaints about not being able to talk to witnesses I think applies to both sides. 
So in any concern about the confidential sources not being here, I think the city could argue just as well that the bartender's not here to ask about process and procedure. There is a lot I have to assume, in my opinion, to find that there wasn't a violation. I have to assume that the city is standing here not telling me the truth, that they sent in two underage, underage people that weren't really underage, that they somehow snuck alcohol into a bar on a Friday night, I think it was a Friday night, that no cash transactions occurred at a bar on a Friday night, um, and that the confidential sources then took this alcohol somehow, hit it, and then brought it out, took a picture of it, and then came back to their, um, I, what do I even call agent. the agent? <laughs> Would be I don't want to. Okay, then comes back out to the agent and and has created this whole ruse. I just I'm I'm having a hard time buying that that is what occurred. Um, is it possible that this bartender didn't enter the transaction into the records? Yes, we had testimony that said that that's a possibility. There was also testimony that the bartender hasn't didn't receive training because he hadn't been there long enough. So I, I'm, I'm just having a hard time on a Friday night, no cash transactions at a bar occurring, according to records. I'm, I'm just having a hard time buying that. Um, so with that being said, I, I do think that there is evidence in the record to support a violation. I have a photograph of alcohol being served in a bar. Purchased, not purchased, it was served. And that's the, that's the violation that I am interested in, in getting to the bottom of. So with all of that being said, um, I am gonna find a violation in this case, a violation of section 6-12 of the city's code. Um, as I stated before, I'm overruling the notice objection because I, I do think that chapter 162 of the Florida statutes was followed in actually giving the notice to the, the property owner. Um, I'm not gonna order a fine. I think that this is a first time violation and this property owner, the fact that you've gone five years in business and have not had a violation, um, I think that's commendable. We don't have as a whole lot of businesses that do that in this city. I've, I've seen a lot of these cases. Um, sometimes we have three, four, five violations in a, in a year time frame. So with the long standing time frame of not having a violation, I'm not gonna order a fine and I'm not gonna order training either. Um, but I am going to find the violation. Okay, so with that being said, um, I don't know if you have an order for them today no, or if that needs to go in the mail. Okay, all right. Thank you all very much for your time. I do appreciate it. <laughs> Case number five other matters, 811 33rd Street, CE 16030830. Which one was it? Um, five other matters, 811 33rd. Good morning. Hi, good or, morning. Yes, uh, still morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And um, the code officer usually gives me, or supervisor, I'm sorry, gives me a summary of kind of the liens and where you are, and then you'll have an opportunity to tell me why you want a reduction today. Great. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Case ending 830 at 1133rd Street, date ordered 5 4 of 16, fine started 6 6 of 16, ran for 885 days, current total 88,500, daily fine $100 a day, date of compliance 11 8 of 18. Uh, hang on. Thank you. Uh, it's, it is a new owner, more on that in a minute. Um, the city asking for 50%, there's, there's two main factors here. One is, while it is a new owner, um, there's no mitigating factors except the owner states on their application their exemplary record of property ownership. However, they've got six other properties under five LLCs, all multi-units that are active from two to 10 units, not a single one has a rental license. Hopefully, after today, they'll take care of that so that we don't have to cite that as well. Um, However, that's the new owner. That's the new owner who listed their exemplary record as the reason they should get a significant reduction. Okay. However, the new owner informed me just a few days ago that this is actually the money in escrow from the previous owner. Um, 
uh, the, the previous owner owned all three properties that they now own that we had to inspect to get to this hearing. Between the three, they had 14 cases in 3.5 years. So they were about as far as from exemplary as could be. The city's asking for 50%. Okay. All right. Hi. Could you tell me your names, please? Hi. Good morning. Uh, Patricia Adkins. This is my business partner, Lucas Samuels. Hi. Good morning. So we purchased 37 units from the previous owner um, and their uh, international owners. They had distressed properties. They owned them for three years. And this particular property, I guess, was had this uh, accruing lien every day. Their previous property manager stopped the bleeding of, of the accruing. Um, as we purchased the properties, we've had them for about three months now, and we've basically gotten the rental licenses required on there. We've renovated, clean the places up. We've gotten new tenants in there, good tenants. Um, we've had inspections done with Section 8 housing. We've had the city, city inspections done on them. Everything's been great. We've gotten actually compliments from other code enforcers that we're doing a really good job in the area. And all we're trying to do is basically turn these distressed properties around and get good tenants in there and obviously, obviously make, you know, make a business out of it. But yeah, and just to add to that too, so it's it's more, um, so we're, there are different licenses. I mean, we've been dealing with a myriad of, of problems. These, these were eyesores for the city. Um, these, I mean, they were they were in very poor shape. So we've um, almost, almost unrentable. So we don't have licenses for the other ones because there's no one living in them. They're, we're renovating them little by little. It's all out of our own money. This is just our, our thing, no big investors, no mall. This, this is just Not us. only that, the 37 units, we mm -hmm. only inherited about a third of those units were occupied and half of those tenants mm -hmm. we had evict because they weren't paying rent. They just had bad habits from you know, poor management that they had before. So we literally had to evict all those, half of those people and then get those units turned around and renovated. So it's been, an, the last three months have, have been, you know, we've just been busy just getting these it, units, you know, obviously, uh, habitable and you know in good condition exactly so i mean it's 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 been a battle every single day again we've we put in so much money and as we're getting the units fixed up and ready and to code that's when we're getting the licenses as the ones that are actually rented versus not rented um we've we've had uh people on this particular property uh between these three we had two men for nine hours picking up trash not only in our properties but the surrounding properties as well they were floating in a street uh we've become uh, on a first name basis a lot of the code enforcers uh, also and the police <laughs> and, a, and a police um here because in there was Point. a lot of drug dealing going on and you know we assume these properties it was just you know they were just in disarray so okay just real quick um the six properties i think i heard that don't have rental licenses are you actively pursuing getting those licenses are these some of the units that you and you got through this transaction all at the same time yes right okay absolutely so we we are looking for um a 25 percent lien reduction for the eighty-eight thousand in the previous because that lien was something that had nothing to do with us we literally inherited that three months ago from the previous owner because mm -hmm. they live in brazil they had no clue what was going on it was poorly managed for three years and they didn't, she didn't even know about this lien until we were she was until trying we, to sell it. So since we bought this large portfolio and there was so much, so many moving parts, we agreed to assume it. They put some money in escrow, not much, um, just so that we can go in there and turn the place around and get everything reduced and hopefully try to get the minimum, you know, minimum amount charged for the a lien that we incurred, unfortunately. It, yeah, and we and we're the ones that we forced them to actually even close uh, that lien to stop it. I mean, they they just they didn't want to even do that. But all the matters on that long sheet that incurred that eighty-eight thousand dollar lien has been corrected, has been rectified, and you know, you know, all the three code enforcers that were in charge of those three properties have all even said that these properties look great. They've, they've even spoken to the tenants. The tenants are happy. Everything looks good. They walked inside the units, and even Phil Cartwright said that he's never seen some of those units look as good as they have in seven years that he's been in that area so that's so you're a, you're saying that you could pay 25 percent of the lien so that's about twenty three thousand mm -hmm. dollars okay yes ma'am all right would city like to respond to anything uh the other six units if they're actively pursuing a rental license they would have at least applied for said rotten rental licenses this has not happened and not most of these units have as of yesterday current active water accounts under other people's names so Somebody else is paying for water on these empty units that they say they have. Additionally, as I said, the money is the previous owner who caused the violation. So this was escrowed? 
only 25 percent of it was escrow they would not they would not they do wouldn't agree to anything more than that yeah. okay they so said their city attorney i'm, I'm sorry uh, oh, yeah, they, they said their city attorney looked into it um and then you know our attorney was saying they had that whole the, the legal stuff back and forth but ultimately he said no that's it that this is this is as far as this is what it's likely going to be and this is all we're doing and we, we, we're just going to walk away so if i ordered more than 20 Three thousand today, it would come out of your pocket, yes, not the other owner's pocket. Yes, you know, read. I'll revise that to thirty <laughs> percent. Okay. Well, now you're going to make me have to do the math on that. <laughs> okay. All right. Twenty-six five fifty. Thank you. I got it. it <laughs> Your magistrate, if I could. I was faster add, than the calculator. <laughs> no, I got it. <laughs> um, your magistrate, as you do your calculation, if I could also add that we've we spent over one hundred fifty thousand dollars of our own money already. Uh, in we renovations. Could, in renovations. In to, the last three months. Just we we, we purchased them November thirtieth, so we've been on this major kick of just let's you know, let's i mean our goals are aligned with your goals just beautify the city give people a safe place to live i mean that that's it, it's as simple as that and so we've been being how distressed they were we've literally been bleeding money i mean we're it's it's a tough we've, we've had a lot of sleepless nights this, it's, it's been a tough road to try to get these units to where we like them and where the city would like them to be so that's a hundred thousand dollars spent over 37 properties that they said they purchased 150 150 over 30, but it's not $150,000 into this property, which is what we're talking about. Right, right. Okay. Right, but that, that also includes that property to get it up to the point. Most of which are not to, to in the city of West Palm Beach. Okay. All right. Um, so, okay. I'm going to focus on this property. I understand there's a lot going on with other ones. I will say get those rental licenses because if you want to eat into your operating expenses, there's nothing like a fine on a rental license. We, I have seen numerous investors have to basically get out of the city of West Palm Beach because they have spent so much money just dealing with fines running on failure to get rental licenses. So it, it is critical that you do that. Um, I, I don't want you to have to come back here and have to justify why you have all these rental properties without licenses and then the magistrate, whoever's up here, would have to order a fine on you. So I, I can't emphasize that enough. Mm -hmm. um, for this property that has been brought into compliance, um, I, I, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna go with the 25%. I, I, I think that's a, a fair amount. That's $22,125. That is an escrow from what you're telling me. Mm -hmm. um, and okay, so the next question is how much time is needed to get that money to the city so that they can go ahead and start their process of closing this out? Typically it's 30 days, 60 days, something like that. Is there a time frame where you know this money can be here to the Tomorrow. city? Okay. Yeah, we, we absolutely are uh, the title attorney that who we closed with, they, they have it sitting in... Uh, an escrow right now. Yeah. So, so if we, I ordered 30 days, it would definitely be paid to the city within that time? Absolutely. Yes. It would be there tomorrow. The reason why I'm asking is if it's not paid in that time, it reverts back to the full amount of the lien, and you're not coming back here. So right. Understood. Well, it, it, we're trying to sell one of the properties that's tied to this LLC, so it's in our best interest to sell it, like to pay it off immediately so we okay. can sell this property. Okay, so I'll order it be paid within 30 days or it does revert back to the full amount. So it's $22,125, which is 25%. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, thank appreciate you. your time. 22,125. And you can take this with you. It has the payment instructions on it where you, you send that check. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. One last thing, ma'am. Yes. Uh, as this is my last time at the mic today and your last hearing, I'd just like to thank you for your years of service to the city. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I was telling Erica earlier, I didn't realize I had been here as long as I have been. I started with the city of West Palm Beach in 2012. I didn't realize it had been that long. <laughs> so, yeah, my first case was a horrible case. Um, it was 
what was it? It was a re revocation of a certificate of use. So that was my introduction <laughs> to West Palm. And I got death threats in the case. It was, I was like, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> 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 yeah, but thank you guys. It has been a pleasure uh, working with everybody. You have a really, really good organization, so thank I appreciate you. all everybody's work. All right. Too bad we're not done. Yeah, we're not done yet. <laughs> Number twenty one fourteen sixty six Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, CE one nine zero two zero zero two one. Cassandra St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement Officer with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on February February, 20, uh, February 2nd. Certified mail was signed for on February 6th. In addition, the notice was hand delivered on February 15th to the current tenant, and um, I believe she said she's the daughter of the estate holder. That's what she told me. Um, this property was cited for 1813B, <laughs> repair roof walls and foundation, 1813J, exterior paint, 1816A, clean and sanitary. I've had no contact with the property owner. But at this time, the city is asking for additional 60 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. Okay. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. Uh, there is a signed certified mail receipt in the file, and there has been hand delivery of the notice to a representative for the owner. The property is in violation of sections 18103B, 18103J, and 18106A. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 60 days from today's date, or a $100 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 22, 4th Street, CE 19020026. Sandra St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement Officer with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was signed on February 4th. Certified mail was signed for on February 6th. In addition, the property and City Hall were posted on February 4th. This property was cited for 1895B lighting standards, um, clean and sanitary, rental license violations, certi certificate of use required, and restrictions upon land use. Um, they're running apparently a rooming house. Um, I've had no contact with the owner, but the realtor, Diane Villeneuve, did contact me. Um, at this time, the property has complied with 1895B, the lighting standards, and 1816A, clean and sanitary. Um, the city is asking for additional 30 days or $200 per day until compliance is achieved. What is the violation of land use? Do they have? Um, they're currently running a rooming house. Um, Got which it. This okay. was brought to us by the director of public life, Wendy Morse. So, okay. Yeah. Got it. So that would all be resolved through the certificate of use rental license process if they actually applied. Well, not, have... not for the rooming house. They, oh. but to I guess depending it, on what the yeah, rooming house on is. What, yeah, depending oh. on what it is, we'll move on from there. Okay. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notices good and sufficient. There's a signed certified mail receipt and a posting in the file. The property has come into compliance with sections 18-95B and 18-106A. The property remains in violation of sections 18 Oh, wait, did I say that wrong? Came into compliance with 18-106A, not 162A. It remains in violation of 18-162A, 22-32A, and 94-6. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date, or a $200 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 23309 North Rosemary Ave, CE 19020029. Cassandra St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on February 4th of 2019. Certified mail was signed for on March 7th. Of, in addition, the property, the property and City Hall were posted on February 15th. This property was cited for eight, um, what was it like? This property was cited for non-residential doors and windows, non-residential paint, clean and sanitary, failure to comply, and graffiti. We've I've had contact with the owner. At this time, the city is asking for additional three days for 18215B failure to comply in 1816A, clean and sanitary, and 5484B, the graffiti, or to abate. Um, also, an additional 60 days for 18105E and J, or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. You said 60 or 100 for those? Yeah. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There's a signed certified mail receipt and a posting in the file. The uh, property is in violation of sections 18105E, 18105J, 18106A, 18215B, and 54-84B. 
for sections 18106A, 18215B, and 54-84B. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within three days from today's date, or the city is authorized to enter the property and abate the health, safety, and welfare violations that exist, and the city will be entitled to any abatement cost and reinspection fees. For sections 18105E and 18105J, the respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 60 days from today's date, or a $100 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 24, 1348 7th Street, CE 1902-0157. Cassandra St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was signed on February 4th. Certified L was signed for on February 19th. In addition, both the property and City Hall were posted on February 25th. This property was cited for 18162A, 2232A, and 94482A. I've had no contact with the owner. At this time, the city is asking for additional 15 days for 9442A or $100 per day, and additional 30 days for the rental license and certificate of use violations, or $200 a day. <laughs> for the Parking, you said 15 yeah, days? Yeah, for the parking, 15 days. Or? And the, and the, uh, or $100 per day. 100 Yeah. Okay, I got the other ones. All right. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There's a signed certified mail receipt and a posting in the file. The property is in violation of sections 22-32A, 94-482A, and 18-162A. For sections 22-32A and 18-162A, the respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date or a $200 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. And for section 94-482A, the respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 15 days from today's date or a $100 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 25, 1376 11th Street, CE 1902-0161. Cassandra St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement Officer with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on February 13th. Certified mail was signed for on February 16th. In addition, the, pro the property and City Hall were posted on February 25th. Um, this property was cited, cited for 2232A, 18162A, 18106A, and 7434A1J. I've had contact with the property manager, Lisa. Um, at this time, the property has complied with 7434A1J and 1816A. The city is asking for additional 30 days for all, all other violations or $200 per day until compliance is achieved. So they've complied with the garbage can and the clean and, and sanitary. sanitary. Yeah, just okay. a rental license. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There's a signed certified mail receipt and a posting in the file, and there has been actual contact with the property manager. The property has come into compliance with sections 18106A and 74-34A1J. The property remains in violation of sections 18-162A and 22-32A. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date, or a $200 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 26, 915 Fifth Street, CE 19030026. Cassandra St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement Officer with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on March 1st. Certified mail was signed for on March 8th. In addition, the property and City Hall were posted on March 8th. This property was cited for um, 1816A, 3412B, 7434A1J, 94302A4, 94442C1, 94442E, and 94482A. I've had no contact with the owner. At this time, the city is asking for additional 15 days for all the violations or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notices good and sufficient. There's a signed certified mail receipt and a posting in the file. The property has come into compliance with sections 18106A. Or I'm sorry, they haven't come into compliance. <laughs> they remain in violation of sections 18106A, 34-102B, 74-34A1J, 94-302A4, 94-442C1, 94-442E, and 94-482A. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 15 days from today's date, or a $100 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 27, 711 Division Avenue, CE 19030115. 
Cassandra St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement Officer with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on March 9th. Certified mail was sent March 11th. In addition, both the property and City Hall were posted March 15th. This property was cited for 1816A, 7434A1J, and 94482A. I've had no contact with the owner. At this time, the city is asking for an additional 15 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. And if I notice is good and sufficient, there is a posting in the file. The property is in violation of sections 18106A, 74-34A1J, and 94-482A. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 15 days from today's date or a $100 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 28, 1115 Windsor Ave, CE 19030116. Cassandra St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement Officer with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on March 9th. Certified mail was sent March 11th. In addition, both the property and City Hall were posted March 15th. This property was cited for 34102A junk abandoned vehicles. I've had no contact with the owner. At this time, the city is asking for additional 15 days to remove the vehicle. Um, Special Magistrate, this vehicle appears to be abandoned and has been parked in the same spot for um, a month and has pro progressively gotten worse. It now has a broken windshield and we believe it constitutes as a nuisance and a safety hazard to the community and are asking for an abatement. Okay. So it has not moved in a month. It has not moved at all. All right. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. And if I notice is good and sufficient, there is a posting in the file. The property is in violation of section 34-102A. Given the condition of the vehicle, it, I am going to find that it has become a nuisance to the surrounding community. Therefore, I'm ordering that the respondent uh, bring the property into compliance within 15 days from today's date or the city is authorized to enter the property and remove the vehicle given that it is a health, safety, and welfare violation. The city would be entitled to any abatement costs and reinspection fees. Thanks. Thank you. Number 29-5167, Ellerly Travers, CE 19010118. Good afternoon. Uh, Officer Luster, West Palm Coat. This property was cited for rental license and certificate of use. Cert, cert mail was signed on 12219, and property was posted on 21219. This is a new rental property, so I'm asking for 30 more days or $200 per day. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. And if I notice is good and sufficient, there is a posting and a signed certified mail receipt in the file. The property is in violation of sections 18162A and 22-32A. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date or a $200 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Number 3414 48th Street, CE 19010307. Officer Luster, West Palm Code. This property was cited for a rental license and certificate of use. Cert mail was signed on 11919. Um, it has had its first inspection. He has paid for the license. The first inspection failed, and he has not called for the second inspection yet. So I'm asking for the 30 days or $200 per day. Okay. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. And if I notice is good and sufficient, there's a signed certified mail receipt in the file. The property is in violation of sections 18-162A and 22-32A. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date or a $200 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Number 31, 410 48th Street, CE 19010316. Officer Luster, West Palm Code. This property was cited for rental license and certificate of use. It is also a new um, business owner, property owner. And the property was posted on 32519. Cert mail was signed on 12319. They have paid for the rental license, have not had any inspections. So I'm asking for the 30 days or $200 per day. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. And if I notice is good and sufficient, there is a posting and a signed certified mail receipt in the file. The property is in violation of sections 18-162A and 22-32A. 
The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date or a $200 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Number 32, 506 48th Street, CE 19010319. Office of Luster, West Palm Code. This is a renewal for rental license and certificate of use. The uh, CERT mill was signed on 124.19. Property was posted on 325.19. I'm asking for 10 days or the $200 per day. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There's a signed certified mail receipt and a posting in the file. The property is in violation of sections 18-162A and 22-32A. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 10 days from today's date or a $200 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 33 is closed, 523 48th Street, CE 19010321. And number 34 is a duplicate of that. Number 35 is complied, 1425 13th Street, CE 19020208. Number 36, 1330 13th Street, CE 19020209. Office of Luster, West Farm Code. This property was cited for a rental license certificate of use. It is a new rental property. Uh, CERT mail was signed on 222-19. Property was posted on 325-19. They have paid for the rental license, but have not had any inspections. So I'm asking for the 30 days or $200 per day. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There's a signed certified mail receipt and a posting in the file. The property is in violation of sections 18-162A and 22-32A. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date or a $200 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Number, thir <clears throat> number 37, 1310 13th Street, CE 19020210. Officer Luster, West Palm Code. This property was cited for rental license and certificate of use. This is a new rental property. It was posted on 325-19. I've had no contact with owner. Oh, I'm sorry. Retract that. It had an inspection on yesterday. <laughs> it failed. And I'm asking for the 30 days or $200 per day. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There is a posting in the file. The property is in violation of sections 18-162A and 22-32A. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date or a $200 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 38, 1376 13th Street, CE 19020211. Officer Luster, West Palm Code. This property was cited for the rental license and certificate of use. It is a new rental property, and the license has been paid for. No inspections as of yet. I'm asking for the 30 days or the $200 per day. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There is a posting in the file. The property is in violation of sections 18-162A and 22-32A. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date or a $200 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. And Thank I'll you. Miss you. I'll miss all of you guys too. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Number 42, 428 55th Street, CE 19020229. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement, 428 55th Street was cited on 219.19. The property and city hall were posted on 225.19. Certified mail was sent on 220.19. The property was cited for 18-103-E, 18-103-J, 18-106-K, 18-265, 74-34-A-1J, 18-264-A-1J. Um, the property has since come into compliance with 18-106K, 18-265, and 74-A-1J. All other violations remain. I've had contact with the owner. The city is asking for an additional 60 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. 
So the only things outstanding are the 18103E and 18103J? Correct. Okay. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There is a posting in the file and there has been actual contact with the owner. The property is in vi violation of sections 18103E and 18103J. The property has come into compliance with sections 18106K, 18-265, and 74-34A1J. For the violations that remain, the respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 60 days from today's date or a $100 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 43, 557th Street, CE 1902 Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. 557th Street was cited on 21919. The property and city hall were posted on 22519. Certified mail was sent on 22719. The property was cited for 18-103B, 18-106A, 7434A-1J, and 94302A4, um, 70, I'm sorry, 9471C. Um, the city is asking for a split order for 7434A. Um, 1J, the city is asking for five days or $25 per day. For all other sections, the city is asking for 60 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. 60 or what'd you say? $100, $100. per day. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There is a posting in the file. The property is in violation of sections 18103B, 18106A, 74-34A1J, 94-302A4, and 94-71C. For section 74-34A1J, the respondent is ordered to come into compliance within five days from today's date, or a $25 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. For the other code sections, the respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 60 days from today's date or a $100 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 44, 947 39th Court, CE 1902-0315. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. 947 39th Court was cited on 22119. The property and city hall were posted on 22719. Certified mail was sent on 22619. The property was cited for a 105 Point one one ten point one eighteen dash one oh six a seventy eight dash six and ninety four dash seventy one c the property has since come into compliance with eighteen dash one oh six a and seventy eight dash six all other violations still remain the city is asking for an additional sixty days or one hundred and fifty dollars per day until compliance is achieved I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There's a posting in the file. The property has come into compliance with sections 18106A and 78-6. The property remains in violation of sections 105.1 and 110.1 of the Florida Building Code and section 94-71C of the city's code. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 60 days from today's date or a 150 dollar per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 45, 810 42nd Street, CE 1902-0350. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement, 810 42nd Street was cited on 22219. The property and city hall were posted on 22719 and certified mail was sent on 22619. The property was cited for 18-106A, 18-265, 74-34-A1J, 94302-A4, 94482-A, and 94-71-C. The property has since come into compliance with 94302-A4. The city is asking for a split order for 74-34-A1J. The city is asking for five days or $25 per day. For all other sections, the city is asking for an additional 60 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. <coughs> I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There's a posting in the file. 
The property has come into compliance with section 94-302A4. The property remains in violation of sections 18106A, 18265, 74-34A1J, 94-482A, and 94-71C. For section 74-34A1J, the respondent is ordered to come into compliance within five days from today's date, or a $25 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. For all other code sections, the respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 60 days from today's date, or a $100 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 47, 911 42nd Street, CE1902378. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement, 911 42nd Street was cited on 22519. The property in City Hall were posted on 3819 and certified mail was sent on 22719. The property was cited for 18 102 3, 18 103B, 18 103E, 18 103J, 18 103A. 18-265, 18-95B, and 34-102B, as well as 94-442-C1 and 94-71-C. The property has since come into compliance with 94-442-C1 and 94-71-C. All other violations remain. The city is asking for an additional 30 days or $150 per day until compliance is achieved. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There is a posting in the file. The property has come into compliance with sections 94-442C1 and 94-71C. The property remains in violation of sections 18-102-3, 18103B, 18103E, 18103J, 18106A, 18-265, 18-95B, and 34-102B. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date or a $150 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 48, 524-55th Street, CE1903005. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. 524 55th Street was cited on 3119. The property and city hall were posted on 3819. Certified mail was sent on 3519. The property was cited for 18-106B, 18-162A, 22-32-A, 74-34-A-1-J, and 94-442-E, as well as 94-446-2 and 94-442-A. The property has since come into compliance with 18-106B. The city is asking for a split order for 74-34-A1J. The city is asking for five days or $25 per day. For all other sections, the city is asking for an additional 30 days or $200 per day until compliance is achieved. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There is a posting in the file. The property has come into compliance with section 18-106B. The property remains in violation of sections 18-162A, 22-32A, 74-34A1J, 94-442E, 94-446-2, and 94-482A. The response for section 74-34A1J. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within five days from today's date or a $25 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. For the other code sections, the respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date or a $200 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. And I can't remember if I said it, but 18106B did come into compliance. Yes. Okay. Number 53-4303 West Terrace Drive, CE1903023. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement, 4303 West Terrace Drive was cited on 31119. The property and city hall were posted on 31519 and certified mail was sent on 31319. The property was cited for 110.1, 18-103B, 18-103J, 74-34-A1J, 94-302-A3, 94-302-A4. 
The property has since come into compliance with 74-34-A1J. All other violations remain. The city is asking for an additional 30 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. And which one, sorry, you said came into compliance? 74-34-A1J. That's it, okay. I always like that they do the garbage can and nothing else. <laughs> Or the better one is they do everything but the garbage can, and you go, why? <laughs> okay. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There is a posting in the file. The property has come into compliance with section 74-34A1J. The property remains in violation of section 110.1 of the Florida Building Code and for the city's code, sections 18103B, 18103J, 94-302A3, and 94-302A4. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date or a $100 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Number 54, 3702 Eastview Avenue, CE 1903128. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement, 3702 Eastview Avenue was cited on 31119. The property and city hall were posted on 31519 and certified mail was sent on 31319. The property was cited for 18-106-K. 34-102-B. The property has since come into compliance with 34-102-B. The property is still um, not in compliance with 18-106-K. Um, the city is asking for an additional 30 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. I'm going to make the following findings of fact and conclusions of law. I'm going to find notice is good and sufficient. There is a posting in the file. The property has come into compliance with section 34-102B, but remains in violation of section 18106K. The respondent is ordered to come into compliance within 30 days from today's date, or a $100 per day fine will be imposed and will run until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Thank you. We will miss you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Number three on the on the matters agenda, 3005 Pinewood, CE 19, CE 09030226, 226 that is rescheduled. Number six on the matters, 3005 Pinewood Avenue, CE 17020347, that is rescheduled. And number seven, 330 Clematis Street, number 116, CE 18050391, that is rescheduled. That completes the agenda. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.